Welcome to the X Factor GNCC. We're here for round number six of the 2017 AMS Oil GNCC Racing Series presented by Maxis, an AMA National Championship. We're out here in Peru, Indiana to see if the best off-road ATV racers can stop Walker Fowler from yet another win. Now let's take it down to Rodney at the starting line. And now, your starting lineup for this inaugural running of the Amsoil X-Factor GNCC. Rolling to the line first today, he rides aboard the number one. He has five consecutive wins here in the 2017 season. Looking to make it six in a row here today out of Rogers, Ohio on a WFR Yamaha backed by Max's Fly FMF. LSR and MXP, Walker Fowler. Rolling to the line second today in points. Rides aboard number five for Bidwell, Ohio on a coastal racing Yamaha, the Bidwell Bullet. Bryson Neal. Rolling to the line today, third in points. He rides aboard the number 521 from West Union, West Virginia on a CST Induction Solutions LSR Hyper. Aboard the number four from Casca, Pennsylvania, on a JMR ATV Riders.com backed Honda, the Sneaky Snake, aka Cobra, Jared McClure. <laughs> Rolling to the line next today, he rides aboard the number seven from Glenville, Pennsylvania, on a GBC Motorsports Canyon Fly Racing backed Honda, LW7, Brandon Wolf. Rolling to the line next today, he is sixth in points, riding aboard the number three, a six-time GNCC champion. He holds the record for the most wins in GNCC history on a Maxxis Fly Racing Amsoil Bank Suzuki, Chris Borich. Rolling to the line, seventh in points today, he rides aboard the number eight from Richford, New York. The Richford Rocket on the Dillinger's Pub, GBC Motorsports backed Moose Racing Honda, Marty Christofferson. Rolling to the line next aboard the number 13. He is eighth in points. A 23 year veteran as an XC1 Pro Class rider from Aurora, Ohio on a GBC Fly Racing HMF Yamaha backed Yamaha, Johnny G, Johnny Gallagher. Rolling to the line next, he is our top ranking XC1 Pro Class rookie aboard the 741 from Myersville, Maryland on a Ye Old Cycle Barn Walsh. Hedrick Racing, ATV based and solo pilot bag Suzuki, Wesley Wall. Rolling to the line next, 10th in points aboard the number 10, AKA the 213 today, riding his sister's ATV to save his race squad for next weekend's John Fitton GNCC. From Akron, Ohio, on a BNR Motorsports Max's Pro Graphics back Yamaha, Josh Merritt. Rolling to the line next aboard the number 201 from Carroll, Ohio, on a Pierce Performance Max's Moose Racing Yamaha, a former overall morning class champion and top youth rider standout, Cody Collier. Up next aboard the 149 from Montrose, West Virginia, on a Sturdymont Racing backed Honda, Brent Sturdymont. Riding aboard the number 14 from Denville, New Jersey on a JMR, ATVRiders.com backed Honda, Randy Hamilton. 
And last and certainly not least, the 816 from Green Valley, Missouri on a Shockworth Motorsports Spider Graphics GBC Tires backed Honda, Tucker Wyatt. And that, ladies and gentlemen, your starting lineup for this. The X Factor GNCC, my friends. And as we turn our attention down onto the starting line today, we can see that the rain is certainly taking its toll. Already, the officials have announced that this will be a two-lap race. Once again, a two-lap race. It has been made official. Jeff Russell just came over moments ago and told me to make that announcement. So just to help ensure that it won't be too taxing on folks today, a two-lap race, no matter how long it takes, it could be two hours, it could be three hours, who knows, with today's conditions and a 10-mile near long racetrack. But two laps of racing in this kind of slop and mess today as, believe it or not, the sun's trying to burn through. That could be bad news for the day rolling on here if it heats up and starts raining again. But nonetheless, we are getting a little bit of sunshine to greet us here late before the start of this scheduled one o'clock XC1, XC2 class racing along with our A's and B's out here today. Well, folks, as these riders get themselves geared up right now, we are turning our attention over to Ricky Towery. And I know that folks are having a great time today. Not necessarily what we expected and what we wanted as far as weather conditions, but at the same time, it is affording us some great memories of this first ever Amsoil X Factor GNCC. And Ricky Towery beginning his start sequence now as we go over to the all balls racing whole shot line here, $250 up for grabs from them and hot cams and hot rods and all those great folks. We are less than one minute away as Ricky Towery has signaled these riders on the starting line one minute. Nearly 130 riders capping off nearly 500 competitors here today in ATV racing, starting with our youth competition this morning at 8 a.m. The blue flag is out. Shut them down, guys. Shut them down. Shut them down. Shut them down. And nearly an hour and a half later, we are about to go GNCC racing. And I got to ask you, Indiana race fans, are you finally ready to go X Factor GNCC racing? I heard a couple people out there. We're going to try it one more time because we got to get these guys stoked up. So I'm going to ask you one more time. Indiana, are you ready to go? Amsoil X Factor GNCC Racing! Ten seconds. And row number one, the XC1 Pro will be off and rolling here at the Amsoil X Factor GNCC. $250 up for grabs as we stand the line right now to see who's going to take home the All Balls Whole Shot Award here today. It's going to be the number seven of Landon Wolf. Walker Fowler right behind him. Whoa, down goes the whole saw stripe. Johnny Geller gets bumped off to the inside. Chris Borich nearly about four bikes from being last. And man, what an amazing turnaround here today. Tough break for Johnny G in what could be still an outstanding race for this rider. It could be the saving grace that wins the race for him today. See what happens here. The XC2 Pro-Am, Greg Covert, Devin Fion, Hunter Hart, Kenny Schick, Levi Cohen, Kenneth Kelly, Bryson Hobbs, Jason Noble, Matthew Lindell, Cameron Bruce, Brandon Eichert, Wyatt Wilkin, Cody Fox, Austin Abney, and Sam Hopp ready to roll in. And the XC2 Pro M off are off and rolling. Hot cans, whole shot award, two or hundred dollars up for grabs for this rider. Who's it gonna be? 427 Cameron Bruce from Darlington, Pennsylvania on a BR Motorsports GBC HMF bag machine. As we go to our Junior A 22 plus class now, Steve Covert, Nick Mastrangelo, James Mauger, Andrew Connors, Ryland Johnson, Jade Millwood, Zachary Dean, and Zach Wright, Junior A 22 plus class, set to roll next in 10 seconds.
And the Junior A 22 plus class is off and rolling. Only four riders making it out of the scheduled eight riders to appear here today. Some folks electing to sit this one out, it looks like, in hopes of better things next weekend. Nick Mastroangelo, BNR Motorsports, GBC Motorsports, fly racing back ride, grabbing the whole shot. Vet A 28 plus, AJ Koontz, Jeb Pickett, Corey. Blinkiewicz, uh, Todd Muscala. Welcome back, my boy, man. Jeremy Flood, Kevin Patterson, Craig Bowman, Walter Schumacher, Dustin Hendershot, Brad Whitehead, and Adam Reed ready to roll in 10 seconds. And the vet A28 plus class off and rolling. Ah, a little bump and grind action. The 86 machine, or is that 30? Yep, it's 86. Todd Muscala, the Marlboro man from Uniontown, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Grabbing the whole shot in this one. Go, Todd, go. College A, 16 to 21, coming up next. Scott Pearson, Caleb Hagen, Tyler Swindle, Joey Lambright, Drew Landers, Nick Royalty, Joseph Yerkes, and 10 seconds. Michael Schaefer, Ben Berger, also Ross Heyman, Dusty Bell, Andrew Bososki, Jacob Scott, Seth Wilson, McCain Jennings, John Glada, Eli Kiger, Tanner Walker, Bodie Lamoureux, and Andrew Herrick. Bump and grind, Caleb Hagen out front, though, on board the number 50. Hagen, Hagen out of Tompkinsville, Kentucky. Uh-oh, miscue there. He's going to lose it going into turn three now. Senior AB 38 plus class, though. Joe Styler, Stephen Holmes, Mike Zagel, Michael Hayes, and Chris Berry. The senior AB 38 plus class ready to rock in. Ten seconds. Seven thirty-seven. Chris Berry from Mumfordsville, Kentucky, grabbing the lead in that one. As we go to the Junior B twenty-two plus class next, looking at the riders like David Kite, Charlie Rogers, William Wallace, Robbie Perry, Evan Tempko, Travis Mathias, Neil Tolston, Andrew Phillips, Jared Nelson. Ten seconds. Nathan Shively, Travis Matthews, Reese Parvin, Byron Tuttle, Travis Tyler, Chris Barron, John Sutton, and Ethan Fitro. Is that Travis Matthews out of Gainesville, Tennessee? Oh, I think it was, but now we got 235. William Wallace out of Street, Maryland on a BNR Motorsports Sky Goggles Maryland Mafia machine. Man, BNR has been kicking tail in the mud hole shots today, man. That B30 plus class. Lyle Morrison, Alan Tuttle, Aaron Hendershot, Adam Sadlon, Christopher Shaw, William Bolin, Will Jones, Justin Kerr, Howard Hart, and John Salsa, Zachary Phillips, William Craig, also Brian Vasco, Wesley Thompson. Ten seconds. David Nepo, David Rudder, Matt Miller, Brad Kearns, Michael Lohner, and Terry Bobbin. David Nepo camped right beside me. Been drinking coffee at that boy all day long. Trying to keep him warm so he can get ready to go racing today and see how it works out for him. 120, Aaron Hendershot from Mansfield, Ohio, HBR BNR Spider Graphics Back Machine. College B, 16 to 21 year old coming up next. Don Boylan, Cage Chrisman, Michael Anderson, Nick Seal, Kelton Harbin, Kate Vanderpool, Dylan McClellan, Lane Boyle, Chase Vitro, Trey Redman, Hudson Parker, Emily Wise, Chandler Burner. Ben Buskirk, Cole Jackwish, Logan Weishauer, Cameron Aby, and Landon Williams in 10 seconds. And there you go, folks. The final start of this afternoon's two-lap race underway here at the X Factor GNCC. 
7-14, I believe, is going to get the lead. Whoa! 774 maybe Logan Weishauer and I just got peppered with mud out of all these starts that just went by. Well, there you go, my friends. We have them on the racetrack. We got them racing. It's an hour and a half late, but welcome to the X Factor, my friends. And stick around on racertv.com as we'll continue with more GNCC Live right after this. Are you looking for a dirt bike piston that can increase power and decrease blow-by? Then check out Wiseco's all-new Racer Elite Piston Line. Racer Elite has been used exclusively by the pros, including RCA, Yoshimura, Suzuki Factory Racing, and are now accessible to the public. Available for popular 250 and 450cc dirt bikes, the Racer Elite Series is the first off-the-shelf asymmetrical power sports piston ever made. Its fully machined billet aluminum construction features an exclusive custom lap top ring. Step up with dyno-proven power gains with Wiseco's Racer Elite Piston Line. We handle your races, your jumps, and your trails. Isn't it time you give your daily driver the same love? AMS Oil Signature Series Synthetic Motor Oil delivers 75% more engine protection against horsepower loss and wear than required by a leading industry standard. AMS Oil also offers a full family of dirt bike lubricants, giving you above and beyond fortification for your weekday and weekend vehicles. AMS Oil, devoted to protection. As riders and racers, we understand the need to get quality parts, apparel, and accessories fast. We have the horsepower of multiple warehouses to make sure your gear, OEM parts, or accessories make it to your door quickly. Check out our easy-to-use website and experience customer service that takes the whole shot. RockyMountainHVMC.com. Get ready. Again, a two-lap race out there. Hey, now we're cooking. Now we're back. How about that? Welcome here to GNCC Live out here for the X Factor in Peru, Indiana. Out here for round number six, the AMS Oil GNCC Racing Series. Getting a live look there at uh, track length. How about that? Ten and a half miles race length, two hours. We are actually, uh, that's a little adjusted today. We're doing a two-lap race uh, out here today, if you hadn't heard that already. Uh, terrain, mud. Mud, mud, mud. Can't stress that enough. So, uh, man, temperatures in the 60s. There's been thunderstorms. We're on a delay out here, but uh, bottom line is this. We're out here. We're rolling. We're racing. It's, again, a two-lap race today. Uh, maybe that'll last an hour and a half. Maybe that'll last two hours. Who knows? Uh, but, again, a two-lap race. To kind of give you a recap of where we're at right now, row number one took off. It was Landon Wolf taking the whole shot. Walker Fowler was behind him in second place. Uh, so Landon Wolf, and uh, might note, too, Landon Wolf getting some help this weekend from Stu Baylor. Uh, pro bike rider Stu Baylor Jr. helping out Landon Wolf in the pits this weekend. And then uh, on the downside of the start, Johnny G, Johnny Gallagher, uh, who will hopefully be in the booth, booth with us tomorrow uh, for the bike race, the pro bike race, uh, went down there in turn one. So I think he was able to get it back up and going. Hopefully he's out there doing his thing. Bro number two was the uh, number 427 of Cameron Cameron Bruce and uh, I believe we are going to jump over to a little feature we got with uh, our very own Tyler Shepardson talk about some, uh, some of the track conditions out there all right thanks for joining us here at the X Factor GNCC as you probably know we got off to a bit of a late start and you can see why the rain started absolutely pouring down about halfway through our 10 a.m. amateur race so the key to today's race is which rider is going to be the smartest, whether it's picking lines, making sure your gloves and goggles stay dry, and make sure that your vision stays clear. Those are all going to factor into who's going to take this win today. Thanks, guys, and back to you. All right. So there we go, Tyler Shepardson with a little bit of a track update, and uh, 
talk about those conditions out here. I mean, to say the least, mud. <laughs> to say the least, water. Again, that's why we're running the two-lap uh, race for us out there. We're going to do the best to, to keep you guys updated. Hopefully, we get a look at the leaders here in just a moment. Uh, but again, uh, out of the whole shot, it was Landon Wolf. And I uh, saw Stu Baylor walking his way back from the, uh, the start line down to uh, the uh, pit crew there. So uh, Stu helping Landon out a little bit, LW. Getting some help from Stu Baylor here this weekend, and it was Walker Fowler uh, out of the gate running second. Hopefully we can get you an update. Uh, we've actually got a replay here, so we're going to take a look at that and get you updated. This should be a look at our leaders. This is what we missed out of the starts. Right now it's just a bird. <laughs> we'll flip to that here in just a second. So out of the gate, there you go, Landon Wolf running second place right now. And there's some uncharted, unfamiliar territory for Walker Fowler running in second right now behind Landon. Not used to seeing Walker Fowler covered in so much mud. And I'm telling you right now, it is going to be difficult to make out who each rider is there. But it looked like we had Landon Wolf out in front. I couldn't get a good look. I believe that was Walker in second. There goes Chris Borich and I'm not quite able to make out the rest of the guys. By the end of this one, even though we're only looking at a two-lap race here today, these guys are going to look just about identical uh, with all the mud given here at uh, the X Factor in Peru. So that is it for your racertv.com rapid replay. Uh, now getting a look here. Is this our leader? Who have we got here? And you see the guys, they've bundled up. Man, I'm telling you what, right out of the gate in the start line, uh, you saw these guys already hitting the tear-offs right there out of turn one. Uh, so how about that to get things started out here for this mutter? So getting a good look here again. Thanks for uh, joining us here on racertv.com for some GNCC live. Landon Wolf, Wolf uh, according to the replay there, not sure what mile marker that was, but Landon Wolf, LW, out there in front. Now we got a bike. He's uh, waving for somebody. So hopefully we get him some help, man. Maybe the mud fleas are out there in full force. We'll have to see. Can't quite see what's going on, but we got a rider off of his ATV looking for some assistance. And it's just wooded enough, can't quite see back there. So again, you see, you kind of hear the phrase, uh, slow and steady wins the race. I think that's what we're going to see out here today. These guys slipping and sliding uh, around these wood sections. Getting a good long shot there. Still not sure what our rider was doing off the ATV. Hopefully get some help, get some track officials out there to help them out as they are uh, working slow through the mud holes right now out there in the wooded section. So Rodney catching you up here, man. <laughs> so far, LW out in front, man. That was pretty cool out of the start. We got the, uh, the rapid replay. He was still out there in front of Walker Fowler. Walker Fowler kind of in uncharted waters uh, so far this season. He's out there covered in mud. And uh, last time we checked, he was still uh, there in second place. Couldn't quite make out with the mud and the muck and everything else. Couldn't quite make out uh, who was right behind him here. But uh, two-lap race today. Uh, you know, what's the mindset when, when we get a change-up like that? Well, uh, it's a survival race. I think that's pretty much the mindset of most of these guys. And they knew that coming into this one today, whether it was going to be on time or whether it was going to be on laps. Uh, it was just a matter of preparing themselves mentally as well as their machines as much as they possibly could just to endure what Mother Nature has uh, thrown at them. Obviously, there are some... Uh, 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 inclement conditions out there and that's the biggest thing at the X Factor is what's happened with the rain and and I think that's probably what's on the mind it's not so much the length of the race right now it's just getting through the race surviving the race and seeing where you stack up at the end of it now there are some that are hoping to be able to uh, use these conditions to their advantage as we talk about it being the great equalizer it is in off-road racing as much as any as we will probably recognize here today but yet Again, even in these types of conditions, fast riders always seem to excel. 
Yeah, yeah, I think that's exactly right. You kind of hear, you always hear the, the race, you know, stay inside your own helmet, ride your own race. And um, I think that is especially true today. And I think it's one of those things where you end up is, is where you end up. You hope to maybe pick a few spots out and push there. I mean, you with a two lap race, you're not really getting a big opportunity to, you know, you've got to have your lines picked already coming into this one. Yeah, you do. And unfortunately with some track changes out there, Guy's not really sure what kind of changes were made out there if they walk the track ahead of time. So I'm sure that they're trying to put it all together now. But according to what I heard from the course descriptions from both on those guys, originally a 10 and a half mile track, uh, some changes here and there, but it's still in the neighborhood of 10 miles. So, I mean, they kept the length to it out there. So that's going to be the impressive thing. The thing is, will it hold up under these kind of conditions? Uh, slot car racing. I mean, from this morning's 10 o'clock race, we had a lot of uh, folks that were tough to get off the racetrack i mean you know because of soaking up water and having to be drug out and things like that but i think these guys this afternoon obviously got given a little extra time should be a lot more prepared than what uh the novice class guys were and they've been doing this a little bit more and a little bit longer so they should be well aware of what to be expecting and what to prepare <laughs> for now how about landon wolf i mean out of the gate whole shot He's got Stu Baylor back there in the pit crew helping him out. You think when uh, when Landon gets back to the track, he tells Stu, "Hey man, this is this is how you start a race, man. You gotta you gotta go out there and duplicate this tomorrow." <laughs> I'm sure he is <laughs> going to tell him that, and I'm sure that that Stu is going to take heed and and listen to what Landon has to say before he punches him in the gut and says, <laughs> "Shut up, you little punk." You're right. No, no. But in reality, no. There there is a little bit to be uh, learned there, and I think a lot of it has to be with the lightheartedness of it. A lot of these guys going to the starting line today, as serious a championship as this is, these guys know they're here. They know what they got to do, and they know that anything can happen at this point. And instead of worrying about it, these guys actually embrace days like today. You know, I mean, there's not a close battle in the championship points right now, so there's not a lot of stress there. But what it could do is it could put a big swing in points today, mm -hmm. depending on how things happen. I mean, think about the big picture here. Walker Fowler coming into this one with five consecutive wins, and he's got a, what, a 44-point lead right now. And I'm just saying, if something happened, was to happen to Walker and he wasn't able to score points, then all of a sudden that tightens up. But still, he's got some comfort there. So, again, there's not a lot to be concerned about, even for Walker Fowler, if he was to not finish today. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I kind of think this morning uh, you were talking to Adam McGill prior to the youth race, and he was kind of pep-talking those guys and saying, you know what, you look at the elements out here today and maybe you're telling yourself, oh, my God, i got to go race in this. You're kind of panicking. Well, guess what? The guy to your right, the guy to your left, the guy in front of you, the guy behind you, you're all out there in the same elements. I mean, it, it, like you said, it's a great equalizer yeah. this year. Yeah, weather. it's not like the guy next to you is getting to ride a dry track. Yeah. <laughs> so, so don't beat yourself up be before the race even starts. And, yeah, some people do excel a little bit more in rain and, and muddy conditions, while others surprise themselves and do it at – and without even realizing they're decent mud riders. And speaking of decent mud riders, Johnny Gallagher, I heard you talking about that just a moment ago. What a heartbreaker there for Johnny yeah. G. I went up to him prior to the start, and I told him, I said, Johnny, I said, you've got more knowledge of mud races than probably combined of everyone on this racetrack. There's no reason why you can't go out here and do well unless you get punted off the first turn, second turn there, and into the <laughs> into the fence and barricade and uh. start about 40 seconds behind everybody else. But you know what? In today's conditions, that's not necessarily a bad thing because what that might do, it might lend itself to be an advantage a little later in the race, especially if they come up on a bottleneck situation, everybody's all congested together. He might be able to witness a line around everybody and take full advantage of it. And today, that's what it's going to be, capitalizing on those types of things today because you're going to have to be looking for it. There's lots of lines out there, as we can yeah. see. Uh, but still, we're looking at 25 feet that these guys have got to work with out there. And there's some areas that pinch off and get really tight. So right now, taking a look down uh, Vendors Road, there's our Alco cleaners, folks. You can see that they're going to be very, very busy after this morning's 10 o'clock race. They've got laundry detergents and all kinds of things. Uh, Fly Racing is here. That's actually, I believe, our Team Faith Transporter. There it is. Uh, brought to you by Fly Racing. Of course, uh, check uh, Lee Master, our GNCC pastor, be holding chapel services tonight. 
That's uh, just another great thing in the GNCC Racing Nation. Now, they were going to have pit bike races with Fuel Ministries out of Florida this <laughs> evening, but obviously the conditions don't warrant that. Look at that finish line yeah. right there, man. That's an indication. If you're not out here with us, uh, I, honestly, the camera shots, even seeing the guys slide through the mud, doesn't quite do it justice. I mean, it's just a heartbreaker, too. Look at this. We already got riders being towed off the racetrack. It's a heartbreaker because we come to such a beautiful facility and kind of likened to Foxburg, which I know you're not familiar with, which was basically a golf course that hadn't made, been turned completely into a golf course <laughs> quite yet. Uh, we went there a few years ago and had a muddy race, and uh, that was a heartbreaker as well. And we're hoping that uh, we don't have the same type of situation arise here where the facility gets so destruct, de destroyed and wrecked. But, you know, I think grand scheme of things, uh, there are a few areas that are kind of bad where we're, we're parked at it's a big field a uh, big cornfield uh, wheat field hay field whatever so it's not a big deal and uh, some of the other nicer areas uh, you know I, I think they'll be reclaimed quite back back quite nicely and shouldn't affect the hunting and hopefully yeah. the X Factor uh, whitetail folks will let us come back here and enjoy these beautiful grounds I mean under perfect conditions this guy kind of has a although it doesn't have the lakes and everything it's got a camp coker feel to it as far as the beauty and stuff yeah it really does and um if, if you like deer this is the place to be my goodness they're everywhere and um speaking of which if you guys i think there's been some photos circulating out there of the overall trophies for today and tomorrow if you haven't seen those hop on social media check them out you're for sure going to see them here at the podium interviews uh this afternoon in just a little bit after these two laps and it's in, they're incredible i mean just incredible just words don't really do it justice so we'll get a look at those at the center of the box after this one. And uh, I think those are probably gonna be a fan favorite. I know for me personally, I think they're the coolest ones we've had so far this season. But uh, yeah, pretty pretty neat stuff. Getting a look here. Hopefully we can get a look at our leaders here. I'm not sure who is out in front. Last time we heard it was still Landon Wolf. Uh, there's Chris Borich right there working through. He, that looks like it puts him maybe what in fourth. Yeah, I'm not sure <laughs> with that much. I can't even see the numbers right <laughs> you can't. now, man. You really I, can't. I see that six mile marker. I did see the number three on Chris Borch as he went by. There's the 14 machine. So that's Randy Hamilton, I believe, making his way through right now. There's some, is that some XC2 guys? That looked like XC2. And this is a day, man, where, uh, you know, you talk about anybody can win a GNCC race. This is one of those days where that rule or that statement probably becomes more true than any other day that we go GNCC racing. It all depends on what takes place and shakes down out there during the racing today. And bottlenecks, people getting stuck, you know, you'd be amazed at some things that can happen out there. Somebody back on row seven, just turning blistering fast lap times, having a great time, not even realize how good he's doing, end up winning <laughs> the overall, something crazy like that. Ooh, there's a heartbreaker right there. This is probably, yeah, he's on the throttle and it ain't doing oh, anything. Oh man, I tell you, what a, I, he should have went with the 22s. <laughs> <laughs> That's 22 right. inch tires. Always, time. always go bigger. Yeah. Go big, go home. That's it. I tell you, Casey Greek will tell you that down at Max's Tires, as will uh, any, <laughs> uh, I think even big Steve Walker at CST will tell you the same thing down there. Go with the big tires. And he may have even gone with the big tires. This is really hard to tell right now because he's, they're, the bottom's just basically falling out in some of these areas. Now, it's not like this all the way around. We do have some lower saturated areas that things like that happen. And unfortunately for this rider right here, I heard you mention the mud fleas. Yeah. This just happens to be one lonely old camera guy standing up on a piece of scaffolding over there saying, sorry about your luck, buddy. Yeah, right. <laughs> Need some more Indiana mud fleas yeah, out there. This is when you need those four by four guys coming in and destroying the back <laughs> end of your, your quad to push you out. Uh, you know, I, I imagine if we watch this guy, I can't quite get a number on this guy, man. I really can't. I would like to be able to uh, acknowledge who this gentleman is because he's just sitting there pointing guys around. I think it's obvious they don't want to go through yeah, there. Yeah, don't take this line. <laughs> can't still see that number i, I want to say 14 but i don't know yeah that, but that wouldn't be that randy that, hamilton yeah, that's no. not a pro rider so that's a probably a c or b or b class rider it's not a c rider they raced this morning uh if you're wondering about times right now we are 26 minutes into this race again it's a two lap race uh that was made official by jeff russell just prior to the start of this race due to conditions and obviously uh, i think we're noting that but look right here i mean you take a look at this section of the track and some of the higher grounds, though it's wet and a little bit sticky, there's some areas of this track that are still very passable and 
will straighten up pretty quick, I think, uh, in those wood sections. But there are those sections that it's not. Yeah, I think you're right, man. It's it's unfortunate we got that last little bit of rain right before this one that delayed us because this morning when the youth riders were out there, it was, uh, man, thing was, that stuff was tacking up real nice. And I thought, man, we just might escape this thing and have one heck of an amazing race here. But that rain, uh, Indiana rain, just got the best of us. Well, we are for sure, uh, I think, uh, in store for exactly that a uh, spectacular race here today and uh you know we were talking about the championship and you know i've been alluding it's hard to believe there in rounds two and three and four that you know wow it's hard to believe that you know we're only in the beginning of the season right now with you know how quickly that feeling changes from here we are approaching now the halfway point the midway point six rounds in on this one and taking a look at the point standings right now we've actually got Walker Fowler with a 44 point lead, 150 points, a perfect season so far with uh, 30 points around at five rounds. Uh, second place of points right now is Bryson Neal. Neal with 106 points. And Neal's only finished off the podium one time this season with a fourth place position finish. Adam McGill, he's third in points with 103, so he's only three points right now back behind Bryson Neal. And then you've got uh, Jared McClure, who didn't finish in round four, didn't score any points, and he's fourth place with 86 right now. Here we go. Now we're getting a look at the leaders. <laughs> I wish I could tell you who that is. I don't know if that's still Landon Wolf. I don't know. <laughs> that's 521 of Adam McGill. The Mafia has got to be pretty pumped. Right? Look at the water. That's yeah. what we're talking about. The wood section looks great, but some of these low-lying areas, it's been like uh, running through the Whoa. graves. There's Walker Fowler. He's that? at least fourth, fifth place. There's Chris Bortz right behind him. Again, we're in one of those scenarios, positioning yourself right now. Tucker Wyatt up in the mix, and who's that? Hunter Hart is right there in the thick <laughs> of it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb here and say Hunter Hart is actually leading in on adjusted time at this particular point. I don't think we saw a full minute pass by uh, when the first place guy went across and through that area. Uh, there's the 14, Randy Hamilton making his way by right now. Uh, there would be, I, I imagine, probably second place in the uh, XC2 Pro-Am class. I didn't quite catch the number on that one, but right now, the way things are looking, I'm thinking, and I'm calculating and, and assuming at the moment that Hunter Hart will likely be in adjusted overall time, and that's exactly what I was going to tell you, and what I have said is that this is the type of day where anybody, can, and not saying that Hunter Hart couldn't oh, do it. Oh, yeah. Because Hunter Hart is kind of like one of the prodigy racers yeah. that we know. There's the number four of Jared McClure making his way by now here at the seven. Um, but Hunter Hart is kind of a prodigy similar to what Walker Fowler was as well. And, and to be honest with you, we got some good talent that has come up prior to that. But probably Hunter may be the rider that everyone, even while he was still in the youth class, saying that's going to be Walker Fowler's next challenge. And yeah. And that, and that quite likely is starting to, to, to look like that right now, especially if he goes out there and gets a win today. Talk about confidence. That's going to pump him up. That's going to get inside the heads of a lot of people out there, especially hunters. It's going to make him feel pretty good. And uh, we'll see whether or not he's got that officially or not when they come around for the conclusion of this. And about three more miles to go before we'll see the finish line. And we encourage you to stick around because this muddy Amsoil X Factor GNCC continues after this. GNCC is Old Eagles 50 Cal, Cowboy Boots, Diesel Trucks, Copenhagen, Bush Light kind of men. I'm a sore loser. Losing is not an option for me. Be the best, the best, the best. You have to have the best equipment under the hood. That's why I, I only use Cometic products in my engines. Cometic gasket. Cometic gasket. Cometic gasket. Cometic gasket, a superior quality gasket for those of us who demand the highest level of performance. 
I'm Barry Hawk, eight-time GNCC champion, current Coastal Racing team manager. Coastal Racing depends on Evans Coolant because there is a lot of variables in GNCC racing. Toughest, most demanding sports there is. From my experience, without a doubt, Evans is the way to go. We have it in all of our race bikes, our race ATVs, our UTVs. It is for sure, without a doubt, a must on our race team. The pros use Evans Coolant and so should you. All right, and we're back. Welcome back to GNCC Live. I'm Mikey Waynes, along with Rodney Tomlin. And, and uh, go ahead. Just because he turns it off don't mean he can't turn it on. Let us know <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Old Flash in there. Uh, Adam Gordon is uh, soloing it today without Chelsea Taylor. So uh, he's doing uh, all the prompting and all the camera shots and everything right now. As we roll through, is that Borch out front now? Or, in, in well, out front of this battle anyway that's coming through. Don't think it's out front. I think that's Hunter Hart right behind him, which Hunter Hart, I, again, I'm assuming and expecting to be out front. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the case, but just watching what's going on. And look how slick that yeah. track is, man. Riders are just going everywhere out there. And honestly, I think if you just throw all the competitive edge out of it, it should be a lot of fun for those guys. Is that Johnny Gallagher by chance? I, man, I don't know. That almost looks like Johnny G, the way his riding style is. And if that's the case, he's caught up uh, pretty good, but that may not have been. And was that Wolf behind him, Landon? It looked like Landon Wolf. It he's dropped like, back yeah, quite a bit. He's dropped back quite a bit. If that's the case, then uh, heartbreaker there for L Dub. As we check in next with uh, our second place in the XC2 Pro Am class right now, I believe that was what? 393, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see I if believe we can find so. that number out there. I've got my. My paperwork here today and not sure it might have been 223 if that was that was Bryce and Hops but we'll know for sure when they get a little closer around here in just uh, moments we should be seeing them come through the finish line we're at 33 minutes on lap number one we expect it to be a long way look at that heartbreaker there Man. all you can see look at the <laughs> the mud <laughs> right around his lips you can just see his lips sticking out of the mud right there in his <laughs> eyeballs <laughs> Something else. Man, I tell you what, out of the XC2 class, Hunter Hart. It was, yeah, <laughs> that's teeth, man. That's there a smile. Go. That's a smile, man. <laughs> Time of his life. If Hunter Hart can pull off his win today, he's he's already one of my favorite interviews. That guy is always just 100 oh, miles an hour on the mic. He's always grinning ear to ear, even yep. before I'm talking to the guy. I can only imagine how he'll feel. I mean, heck, if he can get top three podium on the overall, he'll lose his Oh, mind. yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll, he, he will. And, and mom? Yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody better have some smelling thoughts around Zara. I gotta yeah, say, because right. she's gonna be uh, on overdrive at that particular point and might blow a gasket or two. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, Amy and, and, and Jeff, which is uh, his mom and dad, they are uh, certainly uh, great folks. They've been around this. He's been racing the uh, uh, Wainoa series. He's been uh, top dog in that one and, and coming up through the ranks in that one. So uh, we've seen him get some overalls in Wainoa. So, it's not going to be a surprise to them, but uh, it will certainly be a welcome change that they finally have got things back dialed in there. So uh, back here on the racetrack, Whoa. slip sliding away, <laughs> my friends. I guess, you know, at this point, what do you do? Do you go through the thick mud part or do you find the outside berms and try to ride the edges there? You know, I mean, depends on, I guess, where you're at and how thick it is. But all I know is I would just be trying to have some fun at this yeah, point. Yeah, I think it's one of those things. I think at this point you're just in your own head saying, you know what? I don't even know who the guy is in front of me. I don't know who the guy is behind me. I'm just gonna go out here and have some fun in the mud. <laughs> but right here, I'll tell you, folks that aren't using uh, Amsoil lubricants and possibly uh, Evans waterless coolants will probably see a lot of that steam coming off those machines because the combination of Amsoil and Evans waterless coolants, my friends, will help keep your machine running at a much, much cooler level, uh, even under these types of conditions, and uh, they will be less wear and tear on your machines. Uh, you might spend a little extra money in the initial investment, but in the long haul, you're going to save a lot of money, especially think about it. You got all those great products in it. You don't have to worry about going back to back next weekend when you go to the John Penton GNCC. And there are some folks that I know that was concerned about that. And, and Josh Merritt being one of those, he actually is racing his sister's quad. And uh, we'll see how that's faring out for him. But he says, I've got my fresh quad ready to go for John Penton already prepped and ready to go for next week. He says, I don't have to do anything but train and yeah. just get pumped up and excited. 
That's not bad, man. I tell you what, we get another rainstorm. These guys may not have to clean off the uh, the ATVs after this. Just <laughs> let them sit outside. Let them get poured on. Well, let's hope it don't. don't yeah, on. let's not wish that. We got we got we got a lot of racing to do tomorrow <laughs> too, man. And That's we still true. got micro racing scheduled for this afternoon, this evening. So. My question about that is, I guess, you know, what time is that going to be? We'll try yeah. to get the word on that and let you folks know concerning that. And I understand we're not doing the pit bike race tonight. Is that what I heard out of uh, Team Faith? Correct. We are not. The uh, pit bike race will not be uh, taking place, obviously, due to inclement weather here. Well, I, that that's what disappoints me. I it, was able to do the pit bike race. At well, what, imagine uh, how fueled round ministries. Two. Yeah. And, and I was already been challenged yeah. by GNCC uh, Pastor Chuckle Master. Anyway, he says you're going to be doing it, right? Oh, uh, I did round one, and um, we got a real good glimpse at why Mikey Wayne's rides a street bike and not a dirt bike. Well, if you, have to, if you actually got to see awful. me on a dirt bike, you'd be asking why aren't I still racing XC1 oh. Pro right now? That's how good I am. I Caleb Russell, you. eat your heart out. <laughs> You know, the reason I didn't race, I didn't want to Rodney Smith and Scott Summers and those yeah. boys look bad whenever I would have been been the star <laughs> during the that, that day. You know, I mean, those guys, exactly. I'd have probably waxed Jeff Russell at, at oh, National yeah. Enduros and stuff like that, <laughs> you know. By the way, Jeff Russell, National Enduro champion, I think, what was it, 91 or... I think it Early was 90, 90s. 91, 93. I think it was 91, uh, Jeff Russell was a National Enduro champion. And I tell you, to see the, the love and desire and, and heart that he's got for off-road racing, uh, that's the way a lot of these guys are. Everybody that's out here, we we aren't out here for our health. And uh, I'll promise you, many of us aren't uh, going to retire off of our incomes out here, but we do it for the passion of it all, man. I mean, that's what it's all about. Many of us, uh, not myself, but many folks working normal 40 yourself, 40 yeah. plus hours a week just to come out here and come out here on the weekend, put in shoot three 12 hour days 30 hours almost a full work week in three days yeah. man i mean sometimes at least 30 hours probably and uh pretty impressive mikey i know that uh, uh you work hard man and i appreciate what you do there's walker fowler now is he the first one into the pits now let's uh, start looking at times right now we are at 38 uh 33 whenever he came into the pits and as he leaves there goes somebody he went by plenty of fuel he got a new set of goggles and he's right back out there now we've got who's this pitting that is 521 of uh, McGill. I didn't see uh, who that was that got by. There's uh, Stu Baylor waiting to pit LW right now. We see Chris Borch is pit also uh, getting geared up for a pit stop. So I don't think that was obviously not Borch going through there just a moment ago. 39 minutes into this one now. Walker Fowler is out and about. And I don't know if he's regained the lead. I don't know. Maybe that rider had to pit. Obviously near 40 minute lap time i'm kind of curious as to why they pitted but uh, obviously you hear the stories white or excuse me um fuel mileage white flag is out by the way are coming out yeah again two two lap race out there yeah. due to the conditions so anyway white flag coming out on this one as our leaders approach i'm not sure who that was but uh, walker fowler is out front uh, we've seen a couple of shots out there where it didn't look so much like so, but now he is. But look right behind him. He's got company shadowing that rear bumper with the white flag out. And I'm sure Walker Fowler. That's Johnny Gallagher. No. Johnny Gallagher is yes. running in the number two spot right now out of Aurora, Ohio, only 2.6 seconds behind Fowler. I oh. told you, <laughs> I told you that that start today might have been the greatest thing that could have happened to him. Not sure where he's going to be in position at the end of one more lap right now. But my friends, Johnny Gallagher is second place, only 2.6 seconds behind Walker Fowler. <laughs> Adam McGill running out of West Union, West Virginia, 8.4 seconds behind him right now. Wow. I tell you what, that, that's the most exciting thing I've seen all season. Johnny G up there, Man. second place. Oh, my goodness. Well, I told you he had more experience than anybody out there. And I had to wonder, I did, I questioned what kind of frustration level this would put Johnny Gallagher at. Obviously, he just swallowed that pill about as well as you can swallow. He's, he's, he's eaten a lot of mud in the GNCC before. But like I said, that might have given him an advantage coming up into some of them areas that uh, might have been a little more congested. Now the track's a little more dialed in and defined. There goes LW now through. He's in the number five spot. Adam McGill, by the way, is running in the fourth place position as Hunter Hart is leading the yeah. overall on adjusted time as expected and doing so by 27 seconds. 
A 27 second faster lap time is what uh, Hunter Hart just turned there just a few moments ago, folks. Walker Fowler running second on adjusted time. Johnny Gallagher is second physically on track, third overall. But I can tell you, if Johnny Gallagher takes those checkers, it's it's oh, all man. over, brother. Crying right now, man. I tell <laughs> you what, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going down straight to the finish line. I'm going to give him a big hug. I'm doing Heck the interview. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing good the with interview. it. You, hey, hey, he, he deserves that. You deserve that for sure. <laughs> I've watched that man ride, and I, I tell you, man, he, he, I just can't wait to see how this day unfolds. Even if he doesn't win, man, he's got to be feeling yeah. so stoked right now, knowing how close he is. How long has it been since he's seen a number two whenever he came through the finish line scoring barrels right there? You know that That's, just had to charge him up. You know what? It's funny because I'm thinking back this morning. You know, you do the, uh, the VP Pro Racing, uh, VP Fuels Pro Row interviews down there, and you heard Johnny G talking about, you know, sometimes as pros, we see ourselves, you know, we're up here, maybe in the top three, we start to get a little excited, we start to panic a little bit. I don't think Johnny G's that guy. He <laughs> has got the experience, he knows what he's doing. Well, and, let's and, get him in the final turns, head toward checker flag. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, we'll that's see. for sure. But I, I, I'm the same, I, I think at that point, he would be riding on a cloud, and it would, yeah. nothing would stop him at that point. And, and, and honestly, not, not wishing any ill will on anyone, Walker Fowler or Hunter Hart, because this could be an amazing day. Hunter Hart could get his first overall here today. Johnny Gallagher could get his first ever overall after 23 years as an XC1 wow. Pro Class racer. Walker Fowler could get six in a row here today. So, I mean, we the stage is literally set yeah. for some big things today. And regardless of what happens, we are at record-breaking potential <laughs> as far as today's finish is concerned. Adam McGill, he'd be the only one to spoil that right now because <laughs> he's won. He isn't looking, I mean, other than, you know, I mean, it'd be good to see him win and everything. Sure. But, but you know, I mean, the magnitude of the win would kind of dissipate a little bit yeah. as far as the uh, record-holding aspect of it. But uh, I'm sure we could figure out some way to make it uh, ex exceptional that uh, McGill wins. But McGill, right there in position, he's eight seconds behind. I put him 10 seconds behind Walker Fowler, so we're not counting him out. That was Matt Lindell, the 402, running second in the XC2 Pro-Am class there out of Muscatine, Iowa. Muscatine? Muscatine, Muscatine. <laughs> However you say it, Matt Lindell is second, and he is fifth overall. Greg Covert, the number nine out of Ithaca, 1.8 seconds behind is six. Now, I'm just going to give you an idea. 43 seconds behind is that of uh, Matthew Lindell behind Hunter Hart. That's what kind of lap time Hunter Hart's already posted up. A 39.16 to Walker Fowler's 39.43 and Johnny Gallagher's 39.45. So Borich is seventh overall. That would put him fifth in class, but seventh overall board the number three machine out of Sunbury, PA. Landon Wolf is now eighth overall. Tucker White, ninth. And 10th place is Randy Hamilton. There's our leaders coming through again. Walker Fowler just came through, and I believe that's still Johnny G right behind him. It most certainly is. Johnny Gallagher, steady as she goes out there. And I tell you, we should be able to recognize that riding style about anywhere. There's McGill still running a tight-knit race in the third-place position. You've seen that CST tight. I mean, even the, CS, the, the, stick, the mud don't even stick to the CST <laughs> sticker. That's how good tires those are, man. I mean, they throw mud that good. I think Steve's got his work. Uh, work <laughs> How you out like there. that one, Steve Walker? You're yeah. gonna have to. You're gonna have to remember that one. Go back and watch that. Mud won't even stick to a CST <laughs> uh, tire sticker, let alone stick in the grooves of the uh, of the tire itself. We're at the one and a half mile marker now as these riders are starting to come through. And here's again, this is the kind of situations that has changed the face of this race and will likely change the face of this. And here's what I want to point out: Lap one, our leaders were out front. No issues because they had, for the most part, a free and clear racetrack. Think about it now. There's a hundred oh, yeah. and some other folks out on the racetrack, and they started behind them. Here on lap two, I'm sure there's some closed-up areas. So this is where the bottlenecks will become very uh, prevalent, I think, for the pro class and the XC1 and XC2 classes today. So we could still see the face of this race change quite a bit before it's all said and done out here today, folks. Yeah, and uh, we got to look there at Chris Borich, and it looks like that gap is wait a uh, minute. quite a bit. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Vet A 28 plus class leader, the 806 <laughs> Dustin Hendershot from Washington, West Virginia. Ninth place overall right now. Tenth place overall is AJ Koontz, Tom Koontz, the number 28 out of Fayetteville, Pennsylvania. He's 32 seconds behind him. And that puts Tucker Wyatt now back to 11th overall. But I had to say that we got. 
event a 28 plus class riders running in the top 10 in ninth and 10th place positions right now that's it's incredible you know what just when you're thinking oh maybe some of the riders bowed out of this one i don't know what this race is going to be like we have got different riders different classes in the top 10 and this is about as exciting as it's been all year junior a 22 plus class whole shot to uh, get her out there in the 27 nicholas mastrangelo out of newcastle pennsylvania leading the uh, junior a 22 plus class checks in at 18 place overall uh, we see that uh, actually uh, college A rider Seth Wilson just checked in on board the 501. That bumps everybody down, even Bryson Neal to 20th place overall. Wow, that's going to be a wow. big swing in the points. Yeah. Sense. But Seth Wilson is running 14th place overall right now, your college A 16 to 21 year old class leader. That's, an, that's impressive. <laughs> this is wild. The great equalizer. Yes, and it is not over yet, my friends. It's only just begun. We've got even more changes going on there. There it is, Jeff Pickens checking in. He is 12th overall, third place in the Bet A28 plus class, 15th place now is Seth Wilson in the College A class, uh, and 20th overall is Nick Mastrangelo uh, in the Junior A22 plus. So that puts Bryson Neal out of the top 20 and out of scoring points at all for the day so far right now so wow start thinking about that right now when you start doing the points tally talk about a 44 point deficit Walker Fowler is going to have a couple of race leads before it's all said and done yeah and and talk about wrapping up championships early if he goes at this pace he might be able to wrap it up by round 10. yeah and you know what he, he kind of joked about this in round five saying you know, I'm not saying I will, but maybe if I can wrap this thing up, maybe I'll jump back out on a bike. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, if it happens, why not? Why, why not, not get out there on Sunday, see what she can do out there on a bike? No doubt. And the only thing that probably will stop him from doing that is if he is looking at a perfect possibility of a perfect yeah. season. Right now, he is in class, but not so much for the overall. But these guys, they score for the overall for championship. But uh, uh, they also look at it from a class standpoint. The overall time adjustment, it means a lot. But uh, we'll see which one carries the most weight. I'm going to have to say an overall carries pretty heavy weight out there. But we're still early. I mean, well, we're not. We're halfway through the race. <laughs> we're at white flag last lap. And we still don't know what's going on. Look at this, man. I mean, it's carnage everywhere. But you know one thing that I've noticed? You don't see a lot of mud and stuff hanging from the trees. And that's no. something that's... Uh, a little different for most mud races that we see. Yeah, no kidding. Sometimes you get the mud just, unless it's just knocking the leaves yeah. off, but normally the it's just get weighing real them heavy. down. Yeah. yeah, the branches get real heavy, and, and, and the canopy starts lowering and lowering, and you got to duck your head to ride through and stuff. It's amazing to me just how a little bit of different uh, the mud is here today. But the rain had a lot to do with that and how wet that mud was that we had coming into this race. There we go. Now that, Ooh. speaking of mud, how about, that used to be an RV that's now just a pile of mud. That is insane. <laughs> oh my They've goodness. They've got the front unhooked and they're pulling it. This dude's pulling his <laughs> own thing from the rear. That's insane. And I guess that's just right here at the end of pit row is what I'm hearing. <laughs> so right here on this corner, it's going to be a wild one, man. We may, we should just keep, since we're not going to have a full, you know, what, two hours of race, and maybe we just keep the cameras rolling and watch people getting out well, of the track today. Yeah, and, and looking <laughs> at different sections, how the track's shaping up uh, right now as we take a look at our Amsoil X Factor current overall leaders, Hunter Hart, XC2 class leader, leading the overall. Uh, Walker Fowler, your physical leader and leader in the pro class is second. Johnny Gallagher, second on track, second in class, third overall. Adam McGill is fourth overall. Matt Lindell is your XC2 Pro-Am, second place. He is fifth place as we look at that Rocky Mountain ATVMC.com leaderboard here just past the halfway point. And, and I would give you a Mid-State Chevy midway report, <laughs> but I can't swear that we've even had a B-class rider check in yet. Stand by. Let's see if we can find some B-class guys. So there's not nope. much need in that. We will have plenty of time for that, though. There's Junior B, no Vet B, no College B. There might be a wow. College B. That guy's still there. No Senior A, B. We got Vet A in. That's, we got Vet A. We got Junior A. One Junior A rider has checked in, Nick Mastrangelo, whom we talked about there a few moments ago. We've got three College A riders, Seth Wilson, Bodie Lamoureux and Tanner Walker, one, two, and three. We have 
Six XC2 Pro-Am riders, Hunter Hart, Matt Lindell, Greg Covert, one, two, and three, Levi Cohen in fourth, Austin Abney in fifth, Wyatt Wilkin in sixth. And as far as our next class that we take a look at, XC1, we have 12 of 15 entries that have made their way through. I don't see Sam Huff. Oh, that's XC2 Pro-Am, sorry. We didn't have 15 riders in the XC1. We had, turn the page, 14. So two riders haven't checked in yet. So here we go, guys. Good look at uh, the TV and online broadcast schedule. A lot of folks asking about that this weekend. Uh, all times, obviously, are Eastern and subject to change. Uh, coming up next, uh, May 27th on a Saturday at 1 o'clock, they will have the GNCC Live John Pinton Pro-Am, and then uh, 4 o'clock on Saturday, the uh, GNCC Live John Pinton Pro-UTV race. If you've not seen one of those, definitely check that out. And then on the 28th, we go live at 1 o'clock on racertv.com for the John Pinton Pro Bike. And then don't forget, on May 28th, on NBC Sports Network, we'll do round number three. That was the Maxis Cannonball. And then Wednesday, May 31st, at 4.30 p.m. on NBC Sports, they'll have a repeat of that round three Maxis Cannonball. All right. And taking a look right now, as we told you, 12 of 14 XC1 Pro Riders is what we've seen check in. Top charting rookie, XC1 rookie there, uh, Wesley Wolf has not checked in for his first lap oh, yeah. complete yet, nor have we seen the 149 of West Virginia's Britt Sturdivant. And I have to admit, I thought that Britt Sturdivant may be a uh, force to reckon with, maybe uh, vying for a top four, five position, maybe even a podium spot today. So I'm a little bit surprised about that. Well, I'll tell you what, man, right now, you know, I heard somebody talking about it on the starting line, saying something about the four by fours are gonna have a real advantage out here. And I said, well, the 4x4s had, had an advantage, yeah. <laughs> and they, they did have quite a bit of an advantage this morning over a lot of the other uh, vehicles that were on the racetrack, and man, they, they had another great race. I was checking in with that, and even under these conditions, riders were staying well within 15 to 20 seconds, and even closer at times uh, throughout the course of that race this morning, and actually we had a chance you had a chance to catch up with uh, some of the uh, action from this morning. Let's uh, go back and actually, Mikey, you actually got a chance to catch up with our leader, our winner, right? Yeah, yeah, and we actually um, had a chance to talk to um, Kevin Cunningham a little bit yesterday. Yeah, uh, had a first good four rounds going and uh, had a good fifth round going also in South Carolina and ended up uh, having a little bit of mechanical issues and uh, kind of set us back a little bit. We're still leading points and. Uh, just kind of glad to be here in our home state. It's a little muddy for tomorrow, but uh, hopefully everything goes well. And the mud racing for uh, Kevin Cunningham here, I guess it ain't uh, the, the greatest stuff. I'd rather have it uh, a little bit drier than what the conditions are for tomorrow, but uh, we're, we're here to win a championship. We're here to win races, so whatever the conditions are thrown at us, uh, we try to do the best we can and uh, run with it, and uh, hopefully we'll be up on the box tomorrow. Okay, so it wasn't a four by four uh, <laughs> action highlights from this morning. We actually talked to Indiana's Kevin Cunningham uh, leading into this weekend's race. I totally misunderstood you, Flash. <laughs> he said four by four. <laughs> I thought we were talking about four by four highlights. But you know what? Cunningham, a, um, wow, I, I mean, what a talent. Uh, you, yeah. you get a chance to talk to him quite a bit up on the podium and stuff. And to see what he's been able to achieve over the course of the last three, four, five years and, and, and knowing the obstacles that he's had to overcome in one in particular, Brian Buchanan, uh, you know, to be where he's at right now, it, it's a pretty good place, pretty sweet place, no doubt. It is for sure. I mean, it, him, Brian, Kevin Trantham all up there on the podium today. And um, Kevin, I, I was thinking back and even me going back to the locals when me just starting out, I think Kevin Cunningham is probably the guy I've interviewed more than anybody else, youth, adult, anything. And it's, uh, yeah, it's impressive what he's doing this season. You know, now that you think about it, I, I, you ask me, you don't ask me, but I think about <laughs> it and I ask myself, who do you think that I've interviewed more times, the racer that I've interviewed more times over the course of time than any other single rider? Wow. I'm going to say Chris Borch, I've interviewed a lot, obviously with 73 wins, Johnny Gallagher, an awful lot in the pits and different things like that. But uh, I really don't know. But I know one thing. 
Can't wait to see what kind of interviews are going to be coming after this one today as we check in with it. It's Hunter Hart leading the overall right now. Walker Fowler in second. Johnny Gallagher is third overall. Adam McGill in fourth. Matt Lindell rounds out the top five. And GNCC Live will continue after this. Introducing SoundArt, the world's first truly customizable, concealed, flat panel art speaker system. Sound art is elegantly hidden behind a high-grade, textured canvas wrap, bringing together the best of sound and art. This innovative design allows for a truly invisible, high-fidelity sound experience without bulky speakers. Sound art by Ansia. Your art never sounded so good. Whether you are looking for a 150 class or 600 class deer, X Factor Whitetails can suit your needs. We offer guided weapon of choice hunts for all groups of all sizes. From the time you arrive at our location, you'll get the five star service. We boast the capability of sleeping over 20 people comfortably. Welcome back to GNCC Live from the X Factor GNCC in Peru, Indiana. I'm Rodney Tom, along with Mikey Waynes, as we bring to you here on GNCC Live and RacerTV.com this uh, X Factor GNCC, which is round six of the Amsoil GNCC series. And hard to believe we're approaching the halfway point and quite possibly one of the more difficult race days that uh, the ATVs have seen. We've seen maybe a little bit of mud so far this season, but not to the uh, extent that we're looking at right here, right now at uh, the X Factor Whitetails Preserve, known now as the home of the Amsville X Factor GNCC. Again, Hunter Hart leading this one on adjusted time. Some 26 seconds was the adjusted time. 27 seconds, I believe it was. And of course, Walker Fowler running second. Johnny Gallagher was third. Adam McGill fourth, Matt Lindell in fifth. Now physically on the track, it was Fowler and Gallagher. There was only 2.6 seconds that separated them. And it was uh, Adam McGill back about 8.4 seconds in the number three position. And I'm not sure who we're checking in with right here, right now, but we are trying to find our leaders out there. And I'm sure once we uh, start picking up on them, we'll know exactly who they are. There's Jeremy Ladon, a racer from this morning's racing action and out watching the uh, action here this afternoon. Jeremy actually breaking his leg at the uh, yeah. Camp Coker Bull at GNCC and still was here racing today. That uh, races two wheels too. He tried to race two wheels in South Carolina, but yep. uh, clear heads prevailed and wouldn't let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> But he's back at it here this weekend. And uh, Jeremy also a former ATV motocross superstar. I mean, he was an up and comer, one that was going to be a uh, a top pro one day, no doubt. And who's to say he won't steal one day, but had an accident and at an ATV race that took him, uh, well, completely out of riding and racing for a while, but he's back at it. Look at that. And that's the kind of things that really hold things up. Yeah. But no, it's not the guy at the top of the hill. It's what's going on below right. well, that you got to be see. concerned about. Yeah, that's where the real issue is. You say, well, what's that guy stopping at the top of the hill? Somebody just go around it. No, they can't because they can't traverse the trail around them. And look at this. This guy right here, he's trying to, I thought he was going to try to get up out of that rut and maybe try a different line himself, but he's going for it right now. <laughs> One at a time, One. slow and steady. And he, so far, they've all locked him up right there, just kind of sliding down yeah. that hill. He's a little momentum. I just wonder what is at the bottom of that yeah. hill right there, man. <laughs> That's one of those where they just kind of drop off on into oblivion, the abyss, if you will. <laughs> I don't know if want to go down there or not. I <laughs> sure like know what they're going into, but I'd say it's probably uh, traffic down there that has uh, got some issues that they're all waiting on to get out the way they're inching their way out. By the way, if you're keeping score and count, if these riders run consistent lap times of near 40 minutes, we are due in for a second lap and final lap complete in about 20 minutes. So somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 minutes, this race will continue to roll here this afternoon. Trailboss Jeff Russell out assessing the situation right now in his Polaris Ranger. So you can see the multicolors of arrows. We got them for 
youth. We got them for 10 o'clock. We got them for the one o'clock races. We got them for uh, the micro races out there as well. So, well, somebody's decided somebody's to call. Somebody's done. Now, that's it. I've had all I can stand. I can't stand some more. And it looks like he's not really got any reason to quit other than maybe he's just done whooped, whooped yeah. himself out of there. I could have been a guy like that one guy that had his bike stuck on. I just, Ooh. we ought to go back and check at the mile mark. Is that number 14 or whatever that number that guy was? Is he still out there stuck on the trail right now? I got to think, unless someone's came and towed him by I now, would hope I got to so. think he's still there. Somebody's called somebody at home and said, hey, go get Joe. He's at, <laughs> he's at the three mile marker. Stuck. But there it is, man. Jeff Russell's got his work cut out for him, man. I tell you, when the, the lightning rolled in today, Jeff Russell was probably as disappointed and heartbroken as anyone knowing what that was going to do. The rain was bad enough, but then the lightning came, and we, uh, for safety reasons, had to get things uh, taken care of there. And uh, so they got them all off the track. We had to have the uh, extended uh, delay there, so that's why we didn't start until about uh, 2.30 this afternoon. Uh, by the way, if you want to keep up to date with what's going on, follow us at Racer TV on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. It's at Racer TV on Instagram and Twitter, and also uh, forward slash Racer TV there on Facebook. Or maybe you can't get it at that Racer TV, but regardless, at Racer TV, you want to follow along, keep up to date. We'll have contests in the future. We'll have all the broadcast schedules and things of upcoming events on NBC Sports, as well as all the upcoming live events taking place here on RacerTV.com and through fanschoice.tv. I tell you what, Rodney, talking about... Uh, <laughs> hey, you guys, are you listening to the radio out there? <laughs> the guy standing by the 99, Jeremy Ladon, got fixing the blanket right now. He's got a radio right there. Up, oh, he's laying down. Oh, hey, there you, there, are, you are. there you are. Hey, how you doing? We see you. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming out to the X Factor, man. See, people got the radio, FM radios tuned in and just out chilling out chilling. listening to the action. Hey, guys, you know about as much as we do about what's going That's on right That's about now. right. <laughs> that is about right. Man, I've been listening to the radio, but there, there's a lot of things going on that is not pertaining to the actual yeah. race, but getting this guy off the track and getting that guy back to there and things like that, is, as we knew, the conditions would warrant uh, machines overheating and things like that. But you know, that's something we haven't really seen a lot of steam and stuff like no, that really from these machines. And I think the saving grace is, is that this mud is actually kind of wet. It's sticky mud. I got my feet, I about fell down just standing still trying to move my feet a couple different, <laughs> and I'm not exaggerating. It's not quite John Penton mud stickiness, but it was pretty sticky. But at the same time, it, it, it's moist enough that it's able to fall off. So a lot of it's not sticking as bad as what it could. So. Uh, things aren't as heavy and, 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 and as hard to traverse, I don't think, because of that. So uh, talking to, thinking about Johnny G here, and he comes around that um, first turn there. It, I don't remember quite what happened, but he's put in the wall. Yeah, it looked like he got bumped right into that first turn. I seen the uh, whole shot flags and fence and everything oh, else, man. banners flying up into the air. And when I seen the number 13, my heart sank. <laughs> so do you think it's one of those things you think of uh, like the boxing analogy, analogy or, or like an NFL quarterback? You hear them all the time talk about the nerves and the, and the shakeup and my head wasn't quite right. And I got that first hit. I got kicked in the teeth, and then from there I thought, okay, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to roll. Is that kind of the mindset you have if you're Johnny G? I, I think he may have gotten a little shaken up, but I don't know as much as that as it was just the, the amount of time that he lost there, knowing that he should be excelling out here in these yeah. types of conditions today. So, you know, I mean, all the hard work and the effort that Johnny Gallagher has put forth in the years past and most definitely in the last season i think he'll tell you he gained more this last year than he has probably in his entire 20 some years of racing but he just somehow or another found an edge that he had never been able to find and, and his training level has excelled everything about it has excelled obviously his results are, are reflecting that and not only today but throughout the, the earlier part of the year as well yeah but i i think honestly i think it just came down i think it came down to experience i think frustration i think he got mad at first and he might have use that as fuel and then use the rest of it as uh, okay time to calm down and show these boys these pups how <laughs> old school gncc is ran and the reason i say old school because like eric kudla was talking about man you look at some of the old pictures it seemed like 
you were always looking at mud yeah. race pictures and things like that. And it seemed like when I first started announcing GNCC, I was always going to a mud race. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Kevin Trantham talked about it this morning on the podium for the 4x4 pros. He said, uh, I mean, he's an old veteran. He said, you know what? I think we've kind of gotten soft. This is what GNCC used to be every round, it seemed like. Yeah, he's right. Yeah, absolutely right. Not only has the racers gotten soft, but me as an announcer <laughs> has gotten soft with it too, man. I mean, and we've been spoiled. We've been very blessed yeah. and fortunate with uh, the way thing. And I mean, we get one every once in a while, but I mean, it used to be week after week after week like this. And hopefully this won't be the uh, pattern in the future. That's for sure. Folks, let's go ahead and take a look at your Mid-State Chevy Midway report. Uh, we are an hour into this race, an hour and six minutes and uh, more than halfway. We're about 15 minutes out from what we expect to be a checker flag. Real quick, uh, Hunter Hart, Walker Fowler, Johnny Gallagher, Adam McGill, Matt Lindell, second XE2 Pro-Am, uh, fifth overall. Greg Covert is sixth overall, third in the XE2 Pro-Am. Class Chris Borch is running seventh overall. Landon Wolf is eighth. Dustin Hendershot, ninth. A.J. Koontz, your bet A, 28-plus class, second place behind Dustin Hendershot in that class, rounds out your top 10. Uh, in 15th place overall is a college a 16 to 21 year old rider seth wilson and second place in that class 17th overall bodie lamoreau is also with us as well we see uh in a class by class breakdown uh, of the xc2 pro-am class starting this one today 15 riders only eight have been able to complete one lap of racing hunter hart who leads the overall matthew lindell in fifth and uh there's our leaders making their way across now is that who is that? That's Walker Fowler. That right is there. Walker Fowler. He's got, he's got the poncho on. Kind of looks there like is a Johnny cape. Gallagher. He's got himself right where he wants to be, right yes. in position. And there is Adam McGill. The question is, one, where two, is three. Hunter Hart? How far back is Hunter Hart? Let's keep an eye out there. That is the one. Now, he was what? Probably would have been somewhere in the neighborhood physically about 35 seconds or so behind these guys. So yeah. we'll wait just a few moments here to see exactly where he's at and see if he's within that minute or so right now. No signs of him yet. Not yet, but uh, we still got plenty of time for him to maintain control of the overall position right now. And I'm beginning to think that that may not be the case right now. I'm beginning to think that we are getting closer to that one minute mark and beginning to think that we may be looking at Hunter Hart dropping out of the overall first place position. Yeah, still no signs of Hunter Hart. No. No sign of anybody right no. now. <laughs> Those front three went through. <laughs> well, we saw it. You know what? You mentioned it. Just being a two-lap race. I mean, lap number one, you're out there. Everybody's riding their own. But this one, uh, second lap, there's certainly, and you saw them, the guys stuck out in the mud out there. Probably not a whole lot of line choices left. Uh, so maybe some of those lappers playing a factor out there. Or maybe, that's unfortunately, what, maybe Hunter Hart stuck. Who knows? Yeah, that's, you know, I mean, there's a lot of unknown variables out there, especially on days like today. Keep an eye there. Let me know. But I think we're already without out of the realm of uh, uh, Hunter Hart being in a first place position. A lot of it's going to be, again, we don't know that for 100 percent sure. Time adjustments will be made at the end and we'll know at that point. But right now, it looks like it's going to be down between those front three. We seen going through there just a moment ago. There is that Lindell going through. I did not see Hunter Hart. That looked like an XC2 Pro Am number plate. So we may see some problems out there. We may see bigger changes than what we realize right now. Real quick, though, as we continue through the Mid State Chevy Midway report, keep an eye there, Mike. You'd be feel free to jump in. Hart, Lindell, we'll Covert, Levi Cohen in fourth, Austin Abney in the number five spot. As we look to the sixth place position, then we got. Wyatt uh, Wilkin, Devin Feehan in seventh, Sam Huff in eighth, and Kenny Schick rounding out the ninth place position. College A, Seth Wilson, who is a top 15 rider. Bodie Lamoureux in 17th overall, second in class. Tanner Walker, the 926, is third. McCain Jennings in fourth. Caleb Hagan, who got the whole shot in the number 50 in this class, is running fifth, and it's Drew Landers in sixth. Eli Kiger, seventh. Nick Royalty is eighth. College A, 16 to 21. Nick Masterangelo, Johnny, or James Mauger Jr., and Zach Wright. Checking in, 6.58 between first and second, 14 minutes between second and third right now in this Junior A class. Looking next, Dustin Hendershot leading the Vet A class. There's Chris, Chris Borch checking in through. now. 8.06 Hendershot out front of A.J. Koontz. Jeffrey Pickens is running third, Adam Reed in fourth, and the Marlboro man, Todd Mascala, who got the whole shot, is running back about uh, 13 minutes in fifth place now. He must have stopped for a smoke or something. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get a kick out of that. There's a reason why I call him the Marble Man. He keeps a keeps a, a smoke in his water in his uh, 
Casey breaks down. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps a cigarette in his uh, stress reliever. One of those things, Camelback. He says he's got it back. Senior AB, Chandler Burner, the only, or actually college B class, the only rider to check in. 540, Chandler Burner out of Bellington, West Virginia so far. Uh, junior B class. I don't see any riders checking in from Junior B 22 plus class right yet. Ooh, oh, look at there that. we go. Now we got some action. Yeah, get it. David Napo, my coffee buddy. I've been feeding him coffee all morning. I told him I was going to give him the extra energy he was going to need to get out there and win this one. Look at that. There he is. That might be the guy that was stuck out there a few minutes ago. I you think might, he got I rolling. I think you're right. That's him. He got rolling. But David Napo, my buddy there, the vet B 30 plus class. I might actually give him a little creamer to go and sugar to sweeten that stuff That's up. That's right. But actually, he just takes a touch of sugar in his coffee. I, I learned that making it because I said, dude, I'm going to charge you up. I'm going to. That, that was the leader? leader? Uh-oh. That, that really is going to change the face of this. And there's the number seven, LW Landon Wolf. No junior B class riders checking in according to, the, or the, uh, excuse me, Vet B. There wasn't no junior B. Vet B is David Napo. Sorry about that. And that was your last class. There are hardly any B class riders that have checked in. If you are an XC1 or an XC2 rider or a seasoned vet, there's a chance that you might not make a lap out here. How many riders have we had complete oh, we're get a an entire lap? Well, that just went, I roll, scrolled it down and it said 20. 129 riders, we have 40 riders that have completed one lap of racing. Oh my goodness. Not even half the field. Not even half the field has completed. So one is lap this? Of I couldn't see. Uh, was is this Hunter Hart? Uh, well, no. I think it's an XC2 guy. It is, and I believe it. Sure looks yeah, like it, man. It's I hard to tell. tell. And it, it, you can see the front of his number plate, and right as soon as you can kind of <laughs> come into view, he hit that mud hole. Yeah. Yes. Oh mercy! What a what. This is tough, man. I mean, it's tough for us to watch. Can you imagine how tough it is? But at the same time. It's got to be that, that much, especially David Napo. Can you imagine how much fun that boy's having right now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he probably does. Well, he's probably realizes when he came through the finish line out there a little bit ago. But uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, so I can't wait to see how this day again. I mean, there's something remarkable going to happen here at the X Factor today. I feel it. The only spoiler we got going on there right now would be Adam McGill. And yeah. maybe it's not a spoiler because that would be McGill's first win since that's last true. season. So. There, all of a sudden, we are good back story. to Monumental. We yeah. do have a good storyline then. Sorry about that, Adam. We do <laughs> have a good storyline. You do. That would be your first win of 2017. So I'm not taking anything away from that. And, and uh, quite honestly, it's very possible. If that was our leaders, oh, here we go. I think we're getting ready to look at a replay. If this was our leaders in there, that may have opened up the window for Adam McGill. All right, here we come. That is, that's, is that Gallagher? That looked like maybe Gallagher out in front of Walker Fowler right there at that particular point. I'm not real sure. This looks like Borch. I think that's back about fourth place position. And who is that tied up on the tree right there? Oh, man, I hope they zoom in. That was Johnny Gallagher. Johnny Gallagher was tied up on the tree? I think so. I, I mean, if that was Gallagher, that's who it was. But I don't think those guys were that tight. I don't think they were that tight. So I don't think that was Gallagher. I'm not sure exactly. That might have been even a left rider there. But that was uh, Borch and those guys out there. It'll yeah. be interesting to find out. Right now, Borch is seventh overall. If you look in class, uh, we're looking at uh, fourth place right now for Chris Borch. You'd have to get around Adam McGill. And there was 45 seconds that separated he and McGill, so, and that put it closer to a minute. So I don't think that that was John, uh, Walker Fowler and, or Johnny Gallagher, but that was Chris Borich out there, and that was some other lap traffic. And that might have been Hunter Hart involved in, in yeah. a little bit of that as well, because I know Hunter was right there with Chris at one point, but he may have gotten by him, or Chris may have shaken him at this point. I'm not sure where we're at, what's going on in that department. I mean, I, literally, we are just waiting <laughs> right now and have no I idea. I've been listening on the radio. They don't even really have an idea of what they're not even talking about the race right now yeah. and who's winning. I'm going to say, I think that our track guys, probably the, cons the conversations consisting of, okay, rider this is here, pull him out. <laughs> <laughs> and to whatever mile marker we got, 12 <laughs> of them stuck. I think a lot of it is probably uh, a war of attrition. Some guys probably say, I got to go back and do it again next week. I don't want to roast my bike, so they will probably. Walker Fowler, checkpoint three is what we're getting. 
10-4. You say Walker Fowler leading at checkpoint three. Ten four. That's Johnny Gallagher in the lead. So what no. we did see was Johnny Gallagher out front, Walker Fowler in second place. Will Johnny Gallagher, <laughs> of all people, that was a checkpoint three, folks. Will Johnny Gallagher, of all people, be the one to stop Walker Fowler's win streak? And I can tell you right now, if he does, Walker Fowler will be as happy for Johnny as yeah. he would be for himself to tie the record of Bill Balance and Chris Borch of the six wins consecutive in one season. Right now, I know that this is this my friends monumental things are about to take place here today so we are right now is it who's this coming to the finish walker fowler coming to the finish who is it never mind all right our producer may or may not be right <laughs> we'll see who's coming in at the finish line and that was is that is it johnny g well, it was was there checkers that came out? I don't think. No, there was, we're still looking at white flag. I think that was Zachary Dean, maybe our junior A rider, 727 checking in there. If truth be told, so right now, according to my calculation, Walker's coming to the finish now. So he must have gotten back around Johnny Gallagher. Regardless of how this finishes up, it's going to be a big day today in the GNCC race and nation. I believe that may be our leaders coming around right now. Final moments is Walker Fowler. Is he going to be able to put the seal on the deal for a sixth win in a row and remain undefeated here in the 2017 Amsoil GNCC Series? We'll find out here in moments the final few turns and the final moments of this inaugural running of the X Factor GNCC. There is Johnny Gallagher on his way in now. Also about ready to make history here today, oh, my wow. friends. And this is him. I believe that this, that is Johnny Gallagher out front. Yes. Johnny Gallagher on his way home, my friends, to a win Fans here at the, the X Factor fist. GNCC. This has been 23 seasons in the making of an XC1 Pro Class rider. And my friends, dreams do come true. That's what GNCC racing is all about, my friends. And Jason Wygant, you got to be as pumped and as stoked as I am right now as we watch this unfold. As Walker Fowler, or excuse me, Johnny Gallagher makes his way around here in the closing moments. He look at this, look at win. this. Johnny Gallagher takes the inaugural X Factor GNCC win, folks. The shot, the one heard round the world, the wind heard round the world. The big question is, will he get the overall after time adjustments? I don't care at this point. Johnny Gallagher <laughs> just won the X Factor GNCC. Johnny Gallagher just won the X Factor GNCC, my friends. And do you think I'm a little bit excited? Dude, I this am is super stoked. This is I am super stoked right now. I don't know who's going to be more excited, Johnny G or Rodney Tomlin, but this, <laughs> you, you missed this. As soon as Walker Fowler comes through the the finish line he jumped off that atv he ran up to johnny g high five and hug and celebrating with him look at this and, and look I, at that everybody's going to be giving johnny gallagher the thumbs up the pat on the back the hugs they are coming in my friend one right after another <laughs> adam mcgill checks in in third place nine seconds behind these guys 11 seconds out history has been made my friends johnny gallagher wins the amsoil x factor gncc I told you, man, this was going to be a big weekend. It was going to be a monumental proportions. And I also told Johnny, man, this morning he had the opportunity. He had the ability to be able to do this. Whether or not he took my, my uh, advice to heart or anything that we talked about, I don't know. But one thing that he did do is he put all that experience together out here on the racetrack today from dead last position. He went through the fence. He sat there for seconds, probably 30 seconds behind, and waited to get back into the race itself or get into the race at that point. He got into the race. He moves into second place by the end of the first lap of racing, and lo and behold, at the checker flag, Johnny Gallagher does it. 23 years as an XC1 Pro, his first ever overall win. 
I mean, wh what more can you say? I can't wait. Rodney, are you going to be the man to go down there and I'm talk to him? I'm going to the podium. I'm, 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 I'm happy. That, <laughs> you know what I think of, though, this morning when you were talking to Johnny G, you were talking about that overall trophy, and Johnny said, well, yeah, you know, it, it, it kind of caters to the guys that hunt, but, boy, I would like to have that to put on my mantle to show my friends, oh, you went out there and you uh, you had to work and, and – and, you know, shoot that deer. Well, guess what? I ran an ATV race, and I got this right here. So <laughs> look at my rack. At ATV. I, I'm sure there's and not going to be many people that's going <laughs> to have them out like what Johnny no. Gallagher is going to have hanging on his wall. And that will be the most prestigious trophy of all. And, and you know, again, I, I just got to say it, man. I, I realize that... Uh, you know, for Walker Fowler at this particular point, you know, the, the win streak comes to a close. But at the same time, man, he is, I know, what well, you saw, he yeah. was super excited. He, I mean, everybody, I mean, shoot, it's, Johnny's been racing GNCC for almost as old as Walker Fowler is. Walker Fowler's 24 years old. This is the 23rd season that Johnny Gallagher's been racing XC1 Pro <laughs> GNCC. Not just racing GNCC, he's been 30 plus years at this, my friends. And today he does it, man. I know that uh, the heavens are certainly celebrating today. I know big Dave Coons, big John Gallagher right now are just uh, just elated and super happy and super stoked, man. And I'm getting a little bit emotional right yeah, now thinking absolutely. about that. Yeah, absolutely. Knowing what Johnny has done and knowing the relationship that he had with his father and the close, tight, uh, tight knit and this that they had and the way they came to the racetrack together and the way his father was taken so unexpectedly there in, in, in an, during the off season in a working accident. And, and Johnny never gave up, man. It, it, it inspired him that much more. And and I know that, and, and like I say, Big Dave, I, I, <laughs> it was days like today, man. This day was made yeah. for Johnny Gallagher. There's no doubt in my mind, man. And uh, what a day. Congratulations, Johnny G. Who's getting fourth? <laughs> I don't, we haven't even seen even fourth know. place check in no. yet. <laughs> Not according to what I've been able to tell so far. Uh, we got riders checking in, but only the top three have checked in so far in the XC1 Pro class right now. And wow, I, 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 I just don't know what else to say, man. I mean, I am right now, I'm just probably as excited as anybody. And you know, Jason Wygant and I used to say this, he used to make fun of me because I used to say, that's what GNCC racing's all about. And, and we kind of made it a tagline, and kind of a funny tagline. That's what GNCC racing's all about. But friends, I'm here to tell you, that's what GNCC racing is all about. What you just witnessed here today at the X Factor GNCC, the heart, the determination, uh, skill, luck, <laughs> you name it. Everything comes together out here. Man against machine, man against nature, machine against nature. I mean, there's so many elements that you had to, to face with. And, and it's an old school type race today, just like we say, man. I mean, this is way GNCC seemed to be every week, it seemed like, at least to me. I mean, I'm over-exaggerating quite a bit. Chris Board's checking in on the number four spot, by the way. So I think that should secure the fact that there's four minutes and 31 seconds between third and fourth place. Yeah. I don't think anybody's going to come in and knock Johnny Gallagher off off that top spot at this particular point right now. I don't know. I mean, Johnny, he, if you don't know, he joins us on Sundays for the pro bike race. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get be able to get him to stop smiling and grinning ear to ear tomorrow. Oh, he won't be here tomorrow. <laughs> That's what I, the celebration <laughs> is on tonight. That champagne he's going to have at that podium will have never tasted sweeter than the one he's going to have today. May 20th, 2017. Mark it down on your calendar. The first overall win for Johnny GNCC. Unreal. <laughs> Unreal. Old school. I know race I keep today. saying Old it, but I've win. never had a chance to say it before, and I want to just keep saying it. And I'm going to keep saying it next week. And we'll, can't wait, man. We're heading in. And look at this. We're heading into his home, one of his home tracks there yeah. in Ohio. That's not his home home track, but it's one of his home tracks. And I'm sure he's probably thinking. What can I do next week? Can <laughs> yeah. I back this up? We're going to be able to back this win up? Well, we'll see, man. That would be awesome. Look at that silo in the background there. What nice. a beautiful place, man. X Factor, just a beautiful, lovely ground. I, I hate that, that we can't show you the magnificence of the beauty because of the rain and the mud and stuff out here. But uh, regardless, folks, uh, X Factor Whitetails, premier hunting facility. And uh, so... Uh, my, I don't care what you do, dude. I don't. I just want to do the podium interview for Johnny. You go do the TV stuff. I'll take care of this right. stuff right here. So, uh, 
Hashtag at GNCC Live, my friends. Johnny Gallagher has won the X Factor GNCC, my friends. And uh, right now we continue to, to watch here. Uh, make sure you include at GNCC underscore racing on your Instagram uh, forward slash GNCC racing for Facebook and at GNCC racing on Twitter. Hashtag GNCC live. The wind heard round the world. Johnny Gallagher finally caps off an overall win. Johnny GNCC himself. Heck, my mom's even calling right now. She must have heard the news already. <laughs> Wow, we just sit and we watch in amazement the things that uh, have taken place here. Now, wondering how many folks have actually completed one lap of racing so far. Remember a few moments ago we said 40. We now have 48 people that have completed a lap of racing, 48. So we're nearing the halfway part of the field of racing. I think we had like 128 entries on the starting line this afternoon. That uh, together with this morning's racing put us somewhere in the neighborhood of about 500 riders so uh, here we are right now just waiting with bated breath johnny gallagher walker fowler adam mcgill getting set to make their way to the podium also lw himself landon wolf actually uh, took a uh, whole shot out there he's going to pick himself up an extra 250 bucks in that uh, xc1 pro class whole shot award uh, that's going to be pretty spectacular and something special for him as well so Big and new things taking place. Does it mean that big and new things are on the horizon as far as GNCC is concerned? I'm not going to start ringing that bell just yet, but what I will say is it certainly makes for some good changes here in GNCC. And uh, as, as great as it would have been to see uh, Walker Fowler make a six in a row today, I think Walker was probably more excited for Johnny than he would have been, even if he would have been able to have gone the entire season undefeated. And even Walker said it. These guys are putting themselves in position. And Johnny Gallagher said he's just got to be smartest at the very end. And that's obviously what paid off that and luck and experience, you name it all, everything coupled together here. 23 years of experience taking him to the center of the box here today. Johnny, like I say, GNCC. We have with two laps so far in. Greg Covert has checked in to take the win in the XC2 Pro-Am class. Hunter Hart, who was leading the overall, has not checked in yet. Matthew Lindell, seventh overall, second in the XC2 Pro-Am class. We see that eighth place now has checked in. That is uh, Hunter Hart. Uh, he's third in the XC2 Pro-Am, finished a minute and two seconds behind Matt Lindell, who was a minute 20 behind Greg Covert. So Hart lost a couple minutes there. Randy Hamilton out of Denville, New Jersey, will then score ninth place, at least for the moment, overall. And we got to wait for Dustin Hendershot and A.J. Coots and those boys to check it out. Look at that. Chris Borch has even got a big smile on his face. He is super stoked for his buddy Johnny Gallagher right now. You know everybody is. Stu Baylor back there also uh, congratulating these guys. And uh, everybody's super pumped right now, I think. Uh, uh, I know that, uh, I mean, you can see the smiles in their eyes. You know, uh, I seen the track crew, Jared Bolton and those guys after today's race. So his. So Johnny Gallagher, his first ever overall win. I think they're checking the results boards to make sure, but I can tell you, you don't have to go back and check any records. I talk to Johnny Gallagher all the time. <laughs> he, 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 this is his first ever overall win, but it's good to go back and check, no doubt, because there might've been one of those one-off races that we had forgotten about, but Johnny would have bragged about that for many, many times, that's for sure. So what a day, what a day here in the GNCC Racing Nation. As more riders coming through the finish line and so far uh, only nine have checked in with two laps complete. Waiting on the Vet A28 plus class, Dustin Hendershot, uh, AJ Koontz had a uh, pretty decent battle going on there. Well, I just got an, an, uh, a word that uh, the mini micro racing, we're scheduling that now, looking at a 5.30 start time, 5.30 start time. See some bike guys over there. Uh, there is uh, Craig DeLong, 
a uh, Husqvarna factory rider over there talking to uh, his ATV racing friends. Chris Borch being one of those guys right now they're chatting with at this moment. I see Jesse Ansley down there hanging out at the finish line near the finish line talking to some folks as well. So everybody excited for this particular day of racing. There's Hunter Hart who ends up finishing third. This kid was so close. You can tell the frustration and the disappointment. When you take a look at him right now, a face full of mud, the eyes of uh, true uh, just disappointment in himself and what took place out there. But at the same time, Hunter can't be disappointed because he just rode an ex extraordinary race and an exceptional ride to say the least. And uh, a third place, especially even being able to finish a day like today is saying a whole lot. So Marty Christopherson is checked in now. He has 10th place overall. Tucker Wyatt will check in in 11th place overall, minus three of the XC2 Pro-Am guys in class. That would take uh, those guys up a few positions right there. But all in all, these guys are racing for overall points for the national championship numbers. So that's what they are working on the most there today. So how you see it finishes, how they're going to take it home with them today, I can guarantee you that. Well, folks, we've got podium presentations to come still as we got uh, big celebrations to take place here at the inaugural running of the Amsoil X Factor GNCC. Stick around. GNCC Live continues after this. We handle your races, your jumps, and your trails. Isn't it time you give your daily driver the same love? Amsoil Signature Series Synthetic Motor Oil delivers 75% more engine protection against horsepower loss and wear than required by a leading industry standard. Amsoil also offers a full family of dirt bike lubricants, giving you above and beyond fortification for your weekday and weekend vehicles. Amsoil, devoted to protection. As riders and racers, we understand the need to get quality parts, apparel, and accessories fast. We have the horsepower of multiple warehouses to make sure your gear, OEM parts, or accessories make it to your door quickly. Check out our easy-to-use website and experience customer service that takes the whole shot. RockyMountainHVMC.com. Get ready. Are you looking for a dirt bike piston that can increase power and decrease blow-by? Then check out Wiseco's all-new Racer Elite Piston Line. Racer Elite has been used exclusively by the pros, including RCH, Yoshimura, Suzuki Factory Racing, and are now accessible to the public. Available for popular 250 and 450cc dirt bikes, the Racer Elite Series is the first off-the-shelf asymmetrical power sports piston ever made. Its fully machined billet aluminum construction features an exclusive custom lap top ring. Step up with dyno-proven power gains with Wiseco's Racer Elite Piston Line. Introduce Introducing SoundArt, the world's first truly customizable, concealed, flat panel art speaker system. SoundArt is elegantly hidden behind a high-grade, textured canvas wrap, bringing together the best of sound and art. This innovative design allows for a truly invisible, high-fidelity sound experience without bulky speakers. SoundArt by Ansia. Your art never sounded so good. Whether you are looking for a 150 class or 600 class deer, X-Factor Whitetails can suit your needs. We offer guided weapon of choice hunts for all groups of all sizes. From the time you arrive at our location, you'll get the five star service. We boast the capability of sleeping over 20 people comfortably. Get the most protection for your vehicles and toys and the most bang for your buck with the Amsoil Preferred Customer Program. Join today and receive up to 25% savings on Amsoil products, exclusive product and shipping promotions, free Amsoil gear, points on all purchases, referral rewards. Register today and take advantage of all the benefits offered by the Amsoil Preferred Customer Program. Visit amsoil.com slash PC. Here at Rocky Mountain ATV MC, we go beyond selling parts, apparel, and accessories. We take pride in supporting the sport. We're proud to sponsor GNCC Racing and the KR4 team. 
It's just one more way to show our dedication for the fans and riders of this great sport. RockyMountainATVMC.com. Get ready. We handle your races, your jumps, and your trails. Isn't it time you give your daily driver the same love? AMS Oil Signature Series Synthetic Motor Oil delivers 75% more engine protection against horsepower loss and wear than required by a leading industry standard. AMS Oil also offers a full family of dirt bike lubricants, giving you above and beyond fortification for your weekday and weekend vehicles. AMS Oil, devoted to protection. GNCC is Old Eagle 50 Cal, cowboy boots, diesel trucks, Copenhagen, bush light kind of men. I'm a sore loser. I'm a sore loser. Losing is not an option for me. Be the best. The best. The best. You have to have the best equipment under the hood. That's why I, I only use Cometic products in my engines. Cometic gasket. Cometic gasket. Cometic gasket. Cometic gasket. A superior quality gasket for those of us who demand the highest level of performance. I'm Barry Hawk, eight-time GNCC champion, current Coastal Racing team manager. Coastal Racing depends on Evans Coolant because there is a lot of variables in GNCC racing. Toughest, most demanding sports there is. From my experience, without a doubt, Evans is the way to go. We have it in all of our race bikes, our race ATVs, our UTVs. It is for sure, without a doubt, a must on our race team. The pros use Evans Coolant, and so should you. Get the most protection for your vehicles and toys and the most bang for your buck with the AMS Oil Preferred Customer Program. Join today and receive up to 25% savings on AMS Oil products, exclusive product and shipping promotions, free AMS Oil gear, points on all purchases, referral rewards. Register today and take advantage of all the benefits offered by the AMS Oil Preferred Customer Program. Visit AMSOIL.com slash PC. Here at Rocky Mountain ATV MC, we go beyond selling parts, apparel, and accessories. We take pride in supporting the sport. We're proud to sponsor GNCC Racing and the KR4 team. It's just one more way to show our dedication for the fans and riders of this great sport. RockyMountainATVMC.com. Get ready. Introducing SoundArt, the world's first truly customizable, concealed, flat panel art speaker system. SoundArt is elegantly hidden behind a high-grade, textured canvas wrap, bringing together the best of sound and art. This innovative design allows for a truly invisible, high-fidelity sound experience without bulky speakers. SoundArt by Ansia. Your art never sounded so good. Whether you are looking for a 150 class or 600 class deer, X-Factor Whitetails can suit your needs. We offer guided weapon of choice hunts for all groups of all sizes. From the time you arrive at our location, you'll get the five star service. We boast the capability of sleeping over 20 people comfortably. Welcome back to GNCC Live from the X Factor Preserve here in beautiful uh, Peru, Indiana. Rodney Tom along with uh, Mikey Waynes and, of course, a new winner in 2017 and a first-time win ever by Johnny Gallagher as we're getting ready for podium presentations right now. Uh, taking a look at second place, Walker Fowler's win streak comes to a close, but second place, uh, third place is Adam McGill. Chris Borch is uh, fourth, Landon Wolf in fifth, and Mikey Waynes, I tell you what, brother, uh, again, just a, a phenomenal day. I'm going to go down to the podium right. and get ready for I I interviews here and uh, take us th uh, through that, if you will, and uh, I'm going to go down and do some celebrating with my Sounds buddy Johnny good. Gallagher. Johnny G and CC, that is. <laughs>
All right, so, uh, man, <laughs> I'm out of breath. Rodney and I switching roles a little bit today. Johnny G, you can't say enough about the guy. Um, just wow. I just did the, uh, the interview. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like I said, I'm out of breath. I ran. So, <laughs> all right. Now I got my bearings about me. Get a sip of water here. <laughs> Johnny G taking the huge, huge win today. Uh, I had the opportunity to go down and talk to him right after the race with uh, the Racer TV guys for the, uh, the show. And um, it, it just, he was beside himself. Um, he's grinning ear to ear. Hey, you, you got to see it when it's out there because uh, <laughs> just an incredible sight. Can't be happier for the guy. <clears throat> Ask him to describe it in one word. He said, man, surreal, surreal. So that, uh, that right there sums it up from him. Looking forward to that conversation between him and Rodney Tomlin up there on the podium. And uh, also had a chance to talk to Walker Fowler, who coming into this one had won five in a row. Had won five in a row and uh, looking to make it six. Didn't quite happen. And uh, you know what? Walker, not upset. He wasn't mad. He said, in all seriousness, he said, if there is a guy out there now or a guy ever that uh, I had to lose to, it'd be Johnny Gallagher. And he said, you know what? I, I started thinking in my head, what, well, what if, what if Johnny G's right here, you know, behind me come to the end with I pull off, he said, no, absolutely not. Johnny G wouldn't want to win that way. He would want to win outright. And sure enough, last lap, somebody, uh, I believe Walker took an outside line. Johnny G took an inside line. That was a difference maker. There was a lapper involved. And uh, Johnny G, man, taking this one fair and square out there. And uh, that is going to be one heck of a podium. So again, Rodney and I, two in a little roll reversal today. He said from the beginning, when we found out uh, Johnny G was up there that close to the front, he said, man, Mikey, I'm telling you, if Johnny G makes it into the top three, let alone win the thing, he said, I'm doing that podium. I said, absolutely, man, you earned it for sure. And Johnny G as well, so hats off to him. Couldn't be more excited for him. And then also, Adam McGill taking the top three today. So, whew, I'm still out of breath. <laughs> Talk about an exciting one. Uh, again, Adam McGill taking the third place win today. Chris Borich taking fourth place. Landon Wolf, LW, after getting the early hole shot, uh, cracks into the top five as we get a look at uh, some of our other riders coming through the finish line here. Again, they're getting the uh, podium up and ready. So we'll turn it down there as soon as uh, those guys are ready for us. Rain's held off to this point, so doing pretty good there hopefully it holds off for the uh, rest of the podium ceremony I got to tell you um, I bet Johnny G if you ask anybody he would want to come back here and race Peru Indiana every round man that was that was something else so the celebration is on let's take a look there at the less at the rest of the uh, top 10 out of the overall again Landon Wolf uh, rounding out your top five Greg Covert Sixth place, Matthew Lindell is seventh. Hunter Hart, man, after working his tail off, he led this one uh, after lap number one with the adjusted time. Here we go. How about that? We'll give you the AMS Oil X Factor overall results. Out of Aurora, Ohio on the Yamaha, Johnny G, I'm telling you, I'm out of breath. I hauled butt up here. <laughs> Second place finisher today, Walker Fowler out of Rogers, Ohio. Adam McGill taking third place today. Chris Borich, fourth place. Lane and Wolf, LW taken fifth greg covert in sixth place today matt lindell taking home seventh hunter hart man a uh, tough one for him i'm sure he's still happy cracking into the top 10 in the overall he took uh, eighth place today randy hamilton taking ninth and martin christopherson rounds out your top 10 here at the amsoil x factor so again this one wraps up boy if you miss it if you're just tuning in maybe you saw on facebook or twitter or uh, instagram that johnny g took the checker and thought what you got to be kidding me i got to check this out uh, that's a, yeah, that is true that's not fake news you hear that today not fake news now johnny gallagher our man hey let's take a look at the mav tv tv and online broadcast schedule uh coming up don't read all of it okay all right so we got uh a lot coming up with MAV-TV. So I believe we are about ready to 
head down to the podium where Rodney Tomlin stands by. All righty, folks, I just want you to do it right now. Make some noise for our top three overall in third place, Adam McGill. Second place, Walker Fowler. And his first ever overall win in 23 years, Johnny GNCC, Johnny Gallagher. Wow, folks. Wow, what a day. I'm going to get over here. I want to just say congratulations to everybody that participated today, man. At one point, I think we had 48 people that had completed one lap of racing. And these guys right here were doing it uh, in a fashion that looked, to actually made it look easy. And I'm going to say right now, the way he's laughing, it wasn't so easy, was it, brother? Oh, for sure. Like you said, you had 48 or whatever. We got 48 inches of rubber up here, I'm telling you. These monster truck tires, man. <laughs> I tell you what, you needed it out there today. Hey man, Adam Miguel, talk about this third place position and what it took not only to get the position but to finish today's race. <laughs> a lot of luck, great line choices. I mean, there was I just can't believe it. I mean, it was nuts. It wasn't like it wasn't like the gusher bad or a pin bad. I mean, it was just ruts everywhere. And man, these 22 inch CST pulses did awesome all day long. We had no issues. I mean, you know, the, the rage motor to my Dutch solutions nitrous to my hyper wheels to my tire blocks. I mean, it, it definitely took a well rounded program today to do well. And I mean, you know, it's. Hell froze over. I mean, Johnny rode good. I mean, hats off to him, man. He earned it. But I, I just couldn't believe, like, every time I'd look back, I'd see him, and I'd look back, and I'd see Walker. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? I'd look back and see Johnny, and I'd look back and see Walker, and then it'd be, like, Landon or somebody else. I'm like, what the hell are these guys doing? Are they just playing with me or something? And so we got out there, and me and Johnny run clean. We bumped a little bit, same with Walker. But at the end of the day, he rode a damn good race, and I'm happy for him, you know. Hopefully, hopefully this is it. Now, it's my turn for him, <laughs> so I definitely got to get one this year. But, no, he rode good, you know, and all you fans out there, I mean, you guys are definitely hardcore at this stuff because you guys wanted it worse than I did today, I can tell you that. But we're, I'm happy to be up here for sure. All righty, anybody else that you need to send a shout-out to? Because I know, you, like you said, it, it takes everybody in the program today. Oh, for sure. It definitely does. You know, first, I'd like to thank, you know, CST, like I said. The tires hooked up great all day long. Lone Star components, you know, no problems. You know, me and Walker battle back and forth. And, you know, my custom axis shocks, my hyper wheels, my tire blocks, uh, Dutch Solution, Moose Racing gear. I mean, like I've got this jacket on. I'm freezing cold up here. You know, Renegade Fuels, my father for prepping the bikes. You know, he's only got a couple days to do it, so hopefully we got a new motor at the house because this thing probably ingested just a little bit of water. FMF bikes, RJR components, DP brakes, Streamline, Wiseco, uh, pistons, clutches, Quad-Tex, IMS, flex bars, worst connection i mean just all them companies i'm sure i'm forgetting a few but i just want to get out of here and get a shower man <laughs> all right man go get yourself cleaned up ladies and gentlemen third place overall adam mcgill here today at the Amsoil X Factor GNCC as we move over here to second place. How about it for this guy right here? His win streak comes to a close, but second place here today in a hard fought battle, Walker Fowler. <laughs> Walker, congratulations to you, brother. What a day, man. I was watching this one, and after seeing what took place, and at the end of that first lap, when you and Johnny came through nose to tail like that, I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a great battle, and this is going to be a great race, and we got two great riders out front. Should be an exceptional one. We've seen uh, uh, Adam come in about eight seconds behind you guys. Wow, what a day. Take us through those two intense laps of racing out there, bro. Yeah, when they said two, I was like, come on, we're going to ruin our stuff and do this for two laps. Uh, there wasn't another lap on that track, and I think our I think our time really wasn't too far off, was it? No, it was. I think maybe 20 minutes short of an actual race. Yeah, I think we did like a, a buck 40. So uh, they they called that one, and uh, I was wrong for sure. I was throwing a little fit on the start, but uh, you know what? I, I was taking it way too serious right off the bat, and I went up to the uh, seat in a water hole. Landon uh, pulled over after about a mile or two in the woods. He was. Uh, he was riding well, but he was not comfortable making decisions and having 30 people follow him through the woods. So he pulled over and pretty much said, here you go, guys, have fun. And, uh, man, I didn't go one straight away, and I put it up to the seat. And I was just like, well, and then he kept going and uh, got to watch me go for a swim. So uh, we dug out of that. We were uh, halfway back in XC2, and uh, first time I got to ride with Greg Covert and Hunter Hart and uh, – uh, I think uh, Matt Lindell and uh, a couple of those guys, and they were ripping good. It was kind of a, it definitely wasn't a speed day, and I was trying to do a speed day uh, there for the first mile or two. We uh, backed it down 
put a smile on her face and just started uh, working our way up through the pack. And one by one, we'd go buy another stock, uh, you know, good line choice. And, um, you know, I, I, I got towards the end here, and I was like, I feel like I've passed quite a few people. And uh, I, I see Adam ahead, and I was like, well, at least, at least I'm catching up to whoever I probably should be racing with. And uh, we get out in the field, and everyone's freaking out, and uh, I don't see anybody. So I was like, wow, he's uh, he's winning. And I look back, and I'm like, man, who is this behind me? I, don't know, I thought it was Bryson. I'm like, Yamaha, Yamaha. I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's Johnny Gallagher. <laughs> Whoa. And uh, I think Adam was having a hard time seeing in the field. He had his eyes, uh, I think his eyes were getting clogged up, which if you didn't have goggles on it was pretty terrible and uh so we come through there in the lead of that first lap and johnny's right with me i'm just like well let's see where we go there's one down thank god it's a two-lap race and man that last lap was second lap i guess <laughs> was uh something else um i would love to go walk it and then show everyone what we did and uh these uh, big monster truck tires up here, these Maxxis uh, Razor 23-inch, 22-inch rears, and these other guys have uh, a similar combination. Definitely had to have the big tires in it. Good grief, was it bad. I'm sorry I'm blabbing. That was just, that's, this is going to be one of those memorable races where uh, you couldn't believe what you and the machine were actually doing, but you were doing it, and the people you were doing it with, it's... Uh, Man, this is going to go down. I hope the landowner lets us come back because it's a sweet piece of property, but she is junk now. <laughs> Very good point, and I'm hoping the same thing. I think a lot of us are, man. I mean, this this particular facility is uh, certainly a, a nice one. There's no doubt about it. But I, I got to ask you, Walker, uh, how does it feel, man? I mean, I know you were looking at six wins in a row here this week, man, and and, and that would have been uh, a pretty monumental feat. You were looking at maybe setting some records and maybe even some folks talking about a perfect season. Now you're at least one race short of a perfect season, but if you're going to lose, man, who would be a better person to lose to today, right? Yep. Uh, am I bummed? <laughs> Not really, no. <laughs> um, there's seven races left, uh, so we could we could still do that record. The fun thing about not having a perfect season is uh, maybe the Banshee can come out and play towards the end of the year if the points are good. <laughs> That's something to look forward to. And uh, I, there's not one man that I think has ever raced that I would be more pleased to get beaten by. And on the last lap, I was thinking, man, what if, you know, what if we're coming down to the finish? Do I just pull over? Do I do this? Do I do that? And I didn't have to. He earned it. And... Uh, I'm, I couldn't. There, I, I couldn't be more proud. Um, this man, uh, I, him and his father, have been extremely influential in my life and my my racing, and not just racing, just uh, just an awesome family. His mom's awesome. His sister's awesome, and uh, he's uh, been training with me since I was just a young pup. And uh, I'm trying not to tear up. Uh, he's an incredible, incredible man. Most definitely. He most certainly is. I feel the same way, Walker, no doubt, man, and incredible. I, goosebumps, tears, I, I feel it all with you, man, and I ain't even got over there yet. I'm liable to break down with Johnny here in just a moment, but I know there's some folks you need to say thanks to. Yeah, definitely uh, got to give the glory to God and uh, just thank him for getting us here safe and keeping uh, everyone that was racing the lightning and everything earlier. Uh, we got off this track, and hopefully we can all get home safe, but definitely the big man upstairs, uh, my awesome family. Uh, without them, I, uh, I wouldn't uh, be able to do what I do, and they just put their heart and soul into my program. And uh, Mark Notman, uh, he's got both uh, Notman prep machines up here, so that's pretty impressive. And uh, his family, they drove out here. They drive out to all the races. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I know my sister is watching. Thanks, Em. And uh, uh, it's all my family that watches online. Uh, my beautiful girlfriend, her family, the Pipers. Um, everyone in Florida that watches these races online as well. Appreciate it. Fans, thank you guys so much. Uh, memorable day. You guys, we're... <laughs> Every time I got stuck, I thought, man, there's no way. And every time there'd be someone come out of the woodwork and go belly deep up with me and we get the bike out. So that's, uh, this is the tried and true crowd. You guys ought to be proud of yourselves that stuck it out. Thank you guys. The whole uh, WFR Maxxis Yamaha racing machine. I just, I can't believe that this thing finished and uh, it's, it's good to go. This was her last race. And uh, like I said, it's going to be a memorable one and probably for the better because she's a little hurt. But man, it kept chugging along. Um, which leads into Moto Experts Engines. Thank you, Toby, for uh, 
I don't even know, I think it's his eight or nine seasons with his engines. Uh, Hints and Clutch Components is a new sponsor this year, and uh, clutches are definitely tested on days like this. And uh, so Johnny's also running them too. So one and two for, for Hinson, that's pretty awesome. Um, Lone Star comp Components, uh, FMF, Fly Racing, Maxima, Oils is another thing, man. Day like, days like today, oil is so important. Atlas, Alpine Stars, uh, Waynesburg, Yamaha, Fast, GYTR, I think I might have said Fox already, but Fox Suspension, Webcam, uh, Precision, Anti-Gravity Batteries, motor, uh, Moto Seat, Tire Balls, Vortex, CB4, DP Brakes, Larry Mills, and DP, thank you, uh, Hill International Trucks, Intense Fabrication, uh, IMS, Scott Goggles, whew, Scott Goggles, thank you, um, John and, and every, everyone at Scott, because our eyes are hurting, but they, uh, they did as good as they could, and they did better than any other goggle would have today. Uh, Sykra, Worst Connection, ODI, VP Racing Fuels, Carb Sport, thank you guys. Um, the Richardson family and uh, RCP, DNV Trucking, uh, Fuel Customs Intake, and, and back to RCP. I know Cole's, uh, he's coming around, uh, and then we'll, we'll have him back at the end of the year, and I know we'll uh, have another bigger class again. That'll be awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Walker Fowler, second place here today. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. His first ever overall win, Johnny Gallagher! I'll tell you, Johnny, whenever this one came around, at the end of that first lap, I made this statement. If Johnny is on the podium, I'm doing podium presentations and interview. I got to turn this down for a second. I said, I'm doing the podium presentations because I've watched this guy come so close and, and many times. I've seen you on the podium a couple of times, but to be right here today, man, I wanted to be right here standing beside you. Come on, folks. This is Johnny G and CC. Let's have it for him one more time. Johnny, we talked about it this morning, and, and, and I always do it, but I, and I always have a little feeling when I try to poke and prod you a little bit. But when I made the statement to you on the starting line just prior to the start of the race, you've got more experience combined mud racing than everybody on this racetrack out there in that front row, and you should be able to go out here and win this one if anybody can. You kind of laughed at me and smiled and said, yeah, you're right, and look what you did. You calling me old? No, I'm not calling you old. I'm calling you experienced <laughs> yes very experienced now let's talk about this one man because i gotta say i was heartbroken i saw you into that second turn into the whole shop banners over there and the first thing i said it's not over for johnny gallagher yet this might be the saving grace that might position him to take the overall win and it very well could have been you know uh before the race started when you came down and you interviewed me uh you taught you brought up the mud specialist which was kind of a moniker i carried for a while i'd end up on the podium or in the top five in mud races when i when I wasn't training, when I wasn't in shape, and I wasn't fast enough to even really run top 10, somehow I'd pull out a top five. Obviously experience, good lines, all that kind of stuff, but uh, it brought up something that I hadn't really thought about, which is how many of these things I've actually led on the last lap and had a chance to win in mud races. And uh, so I gotta thank you for that, because I thought about that on the way to the starting line, and uh, I said, today I'm not gonna make those mistakes. And I lied to myself, because I made every one of them. Um, <laughs> But I made them on the first lap, and that was the difference today. Uh, my first lap was terrible, absolutely awful. Um, I, I almost killed Big John off the start. I couldn't see, got my tear-offs blown off in the first turn. I knew to duck my head, but just dumb, 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 one thing after another. I'd get up to the near the front. I didn't know Adam was leading. I thought Walker was checked out and gone. Um, I kind of figured once we got out on the track, that the 22s and 23s were gonna be the ticket, and we were the only three guys that had them, I believe. So I was like, well, you know, I should be able to just kind of ride around and get a podium today. And uh, I was chasing Adam, and uh, I felt like I could go a little faster. I passed him, and uh, Jeff Hart, Hunter's dad, told me that I was leading. And at that point, I short-circuited like I always do, did something real dumb, wedged it between two trees, went back to probably 10th or worse, and uh, ended up coming out towards this field section here and uh, before the races started, I told uh, my pit crew, Becca Sheets and Tyler Rosher, and I said, look, goggles are gonna be key today. I said, if you guys can you know, be there and anywhere that you can be with goggles. And so here I am in the heat of a battle and I just pulled over and got goggles because mine were gone, I, my eyes were hurting. And uh, I think Adam kept going. I'm not sure if Walker stopped, but um, Chris kept going. There was a bunch of people that just kept going, even though we were all together and you know, they were gone. I couldn't even see them by the time I got my goggles and took off, but I just rode up and rode right by them because I could see and they couldn't. Um, so that was, probably one of the biggest keys to the race for me that first lap was Tyler having those goggles ready and um, being able to get up there. I got into second. I saw Walker give me a thumbs up. We dropped the hammer and uh, Adam was right there with us. I think we had pulled away from Chris and Landon and everybody else that was there. And uh, 
yeah, I, from there on, I just didn't make any mistakes. I picked one dumb line. I actually got the lead. Uh, Walker was behind me, and I heard him yell, it's just me and you. I think Adam must have picked a bad line or, or got stuck or something. It was just Walker and I. And uh, then uh, I took my turn picking a bad line. Walker passed me, and I heard Adam coming. And I was like, man, you know, I don't want to be the guy that gets third out of the only three guys that made the right setup today. So no, 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 no disrespect whatsoever. Believe me, I would have been pumped to be up here. I'm, but I just, you know, I just kept digging, and, and Adam was right there, and he was pushing me, and I was pushing Walker, and we came out into these fields, and... Uh, at one point during the race, I actually thought her on the last lap. I thought, man, I, I I'm kind of don't really want to be the guy that screws up Walker's streak. And then I thought about it, and I was like, man, I just have a feeling he's not going to give this to me. Like, he's going to make me earn it because of the streak, because we've talked about this actually before, and I've had this conversation with Chris, and they were always like, oh, if you were coming into the final turns, I would let you have it. And I told him, I said, I'd kick you right in the head if you did. Like, if I win one of these things, I want to earn it. So uh, I believe I did. Walker says I did. Uh, he didn't know I was there. I mean, he knew I was close, but he went to the outside of a lapper uh, trying to pass him in some dry dirt. I kind of sent it on the inside through some water, squared him up, and he's GBC's Doug, and uh, I was able to get to the corner before him, and from then on, it was just, you know, running scared to the finish line. And I almost blew it in the last turn. I, I went wide, got out into the deep stuff, and I thought, man, if this is how this ends, <laughs> this, this is going to be absolutely ridiculous. But I uh, was able to get, you know, get through that and get to the finish and got her done. Man, I, I know it hasn't had time to sink in or anything like oh, that. Yes. Has it? How does it feel, man? What does it feel? I mean, after all these years, all the trying, all the hard work, all the dedication to finally come out on top. Uh, you know, I think, I, I mean, it feels awesome. Don't get me wrong, but more than anything, I think it feels like a little bit of redemption. I mean, I've, like I said, I've, I've given this, this race away at least a half dozen times in my career where I knew I had it on the last lap. I, you know, I, I don't like the mud, but I just seem to ride well in it. Today was a survival run. Um, and I guess I survived, um, you know, and I'm, I'm pumped to be up here. I'm pumped to be up in the middle. You know, these, they couldn't ask for two better. I mean, you look at the last five years and when the conditions get bad, these two guys right here, one, two, seems like, you know, seven times out of 10 along with Borich and, you know, obviously Bryson and those guys are all good in these conditions. But, um, you know, these two are, these two are one, two in points and, and one, two in all the mud races lately, it seems. And for me to get up here and, and squeeze them out, even if it was just by inches, I'll take it. I'll tell you what, here's the moment I've been waiting for right here. Oh, my God. Oh, that is heavy, my friends. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Gallagher, your X-Factor GNCC champion. Johnny, I'm sure there's a lot of... There you go. Kiss that, baby. That's a $5,000-plus trophy right there. One of the most expensive and probably one of the heaviest trophies we've ever had. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and set this down because I'm going to break it. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you want to say thanks to for standing behind you all these years and putting you in this position today, man? Uh, first and foremost, I want to th say thanks to my mom and dad, um, my entire family. Obviously, my dad got me into the sport a long time ago. Uh, I wish you could be here to see this, but uh, this one was definitely for him. Um, I want to thank uh, Becca Sheets and Tyler Rosher, uh, my pit crew. Um, they, they were awesome today. They made sure I had exactly what I needed when I needed it. Um, Chris Bach, uh, always, che always cheering me on. Uh, like Walker said, Mark Notman, uh, both of these two machines here, right, one and two, were built and prepared and maintained by that man. So it says a lot in a day like today that these things are both, you know, keep a licking and keep on ticking. So um, definitely want to thank them, the entire Racer Productions crew, um, Tracy Checo, Jeff Pickens, um, you know, everybody that's, uh, everybody that's kind of been by my side and helped me throughout my career, and, and that's a way too long list because we're 23 years deep into this thing. Um, kind of embarrassing it took this long to get a win. Um, but uh, definitely want to thank, obviously, all my sponsors. Um, I couldn't do it if it wasn't for GBC Motorsports, uh, Fly Racing, Yamaha, um, you know, uh, HMF, uh, Fox, Hauser Racing, Hinson, um, Power Mad, uh, Weisco, BNR, uh, BNR Motorsports, uh, Ryan Smith. I don't know if he's out here yet, but you know this motor just wouldn't die today. I mean, we, I think a jet ski would have actually been just as good for today as a, as an ATV was. We were just submerging them, and uh, this thing never missed a beat. Um, DP brakes, uh, IQ products. Uh, again, all the guys from Yamaha, Steve Nessel, Donnie Luce. They, those guys have supported me through a lot of lean times and um, with my results, and uh, to be up here and and be able to pay those guys back in some small way. Uh, SSI Graphics, Quad Tech, um, Gold Speed, Tire Balls, everybody that I forgot, I'm sorry guys, I'm kind of overwhelmed. Oh yeah, and 
and obviously Scott Goggles, uh, John Knowles, like Walker said, uh, those guys have supported me basically since I started, you know, all 23 years. And on days like today, if you're wearing any goggle, but Scott, you're wearing the wrong goggle. There you go, my friends. From uh, expert himself, Johnny GNCC, your X Factor GNCC champion. Uh, one more thing, I want to thank uh, Walker, um, his entire family, obviously, for always giving me a place to ride. Chris Borch, his whole family. Um, you know, my career was supposed to be over 10 years ago, uh, or more. And uh, these guys just keep pushing me. Uh, they keep making me want to get better. Obviously, this year I'm working harder than I ever have. And it's thanks to those guys, Adam, you know, Bryson, all these young guys coming up. Uh, I just want to keep pushing. I just want to keep up. So it ends up with this, I guess. There you go, man. Keep on going, man. That is Johnny Gallagher and your top three here at the X Factor. As we'll get some photos, and then we'll begin uh, celebrations of... Uh, the pod uh, uh, champagne celebrate. Try to knock that down to the edge off that just a little bit for you guys, man. Had some uh, issues here on the podium, but there you have it. Your top three overall, third place again, Adam McGill, second place, Walker Fowler, and his first ever win, Johnny Gallagher. And now, grab those bottles of champagne and those bottles of bubblies, my friends, as uh, we always like to say here in the GNCC Racing Nation, to the victor goes the spoils and the spoils of gncc come on johnny i know it's the sweet sweet spray of champagne two thumbs oh, come on <laughs> you're gonna have to win again johnny <laughs> there we go <laughs> wow that my friends is what gncc racing is all about right there three great friends a man that has been dedicated to the sport and this lifestyle basically uh since he was a small small child a win that it had eluded him for so many years and so many times finally coming to fruition 23 years into his professional racing career johnny gallagher getting Congratulated by a former competitor, Barry Hawk, right there. I know that uh, says a lot to a lot of people, and I know for Barry, he was excited. We've got the goggles. Are those? Oh, they've already gone out. We've got the swag coming out next. Johnny Gallagher's shirt. Where's that going to be? Is that going to the crowd? Do is somebody in the crowd going to get Johnny Gallagher's first ever overall win? Souvenir shirt right here. Who's it going to be? Oh, there. <laughs> there you go, folks. Faked them all out, but the swag flies here on the podium. And look at that physique for a 72-year-old man. Oh. <laughs> How old are you, Johnny? 30, 39 years old, folks. 39-year-old Johnny Gallagher. Hey, hey, huh? <laughs> I think you are the oldest to ever win an ATV overall, are you not? We're going to have to go back. How old was Kim Coonley when he won? I think Jeff Steffs might have been 40. Jeff Steffs may have been 40. We're going to do some record check in there, but regardless, we got a day of historic proportions unfolding right here before our very eyes, folks. We got micro racing slated for about 530, and I know we, we're, we're continuing our celebrations. We, we need to move along and get our XC2 up here. I need Landon Wolf up here also, and uh, we will have uh, Johnny will be available for autographs here in just a few moments. Congratulations and pictures and all that stuff. And uh, some stuff he does want to hang on to, like that uh, bottle of champagne. That trophy, I'm sure, is going home with him right now. And that's something else right there, my friends. And, uh, you know, I do not mean, I know in the past there's been a racer that has taken it to heart that I have mentioned their age, but Johnny Gallagher knows how proud I am of him and, and what he's able to accomplish at 39 years old. And he knows I'm not calling him old. He knows I'm calling him accomplished season. And now the X Factor GNCC champion. Where's Landon Wolf at? We got a, a whole shot award to hand out here, I believe. $250 to divvy out. We've got XC2 Pro-Am class riders as well to talk to here in just a couple moments. So we're not done with podium presentations. We are not, my friends. I know we took a little extended time on the podium today for this guy right here, for uh, Johnny Gallagher. And right here, we're actually watching. Somebody's got it on video where he got punted off the racetrack. <laughs> wow. So we've actually got 
iPhone video of Johnny getting uh, into the banners over there. Some pretty impressive stuff, no doubt. The fans are certainly going to be adorning Johnny. And like I said, he'll be over at his pits here. Go over and congratulate him. Say thanks for uh, for being what he is to GNCC Racing. Like we say, Johnny G is what they call him. I call him Johnny GNCC. And this right here, my friends, you see, I know there's a lot of people that are watching at home on racertv.com and listening along and probably a little heartbroken that they weren't here for this. Hey, uh, Johnny, are we looking for a repeat next week in Ohio? <laughs> So, get the most protection so. for your vehicles and toys and the most bang for your buck with the M's Oil Preferred Customer Program. Join today and receive up to 25% savings on M's Oil products, exclusive product and shipping promotions, well, folks, free right now, M's so Oil gear, points on all purchases, referral rewards. Register today and take advantage of all the benefits offered by the M's Oil Preferred Customer Program. Visit msoil.com slash PC. So right now we are currently working on making uh, things happen down here. Here at Rocky Mountain ATV MC, we go beyond selling parts, apparel, and accessories. We take pride in supporting the sport. We're proud to sponsor GNCC uh, we got Racing whole shot and the KR-14. It's just one is more way to show anywhere? our dedication for the fans okay. and riders of this okay, great Okay, well sport. let's go ahead and get him on up here. And let's go ahead and get this underway. We want to try to get uh, things rolling here. We got uh, micro class racing to get underway here in just a moment. And Landon Wolf making his way up. Whoa, right now. I just about tripped on that big old hunk of mud right there. So this is the last time we're going to see this particular model right here. How about it for this guy right here? Landon Wolf taking the whole shot. $250 from Weissco Performance Products. One name, one solution. <laughs> Landon Wolf being told he is hated by Walker Fowler. I hate you. I hate you. I guess uh, you let him go into a deep hole of water out there, huh? Yeah, I got the hole shot, obviously, and led for a little bit. And uh, we get, we got out uh, towards the road or out towards a field, and Walker was all over me. And obviously, he's got a bit more experience. So I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll let him by, let him lead. Maybe I can chase him a little bit. It wasn't five seconds after I let him by. We dropped over a little hill, and there was literally a pond on the other side, and he drove right into it. And, of course, I saw him drive into it, so I got to go around. But uh, <laughs> luckily, he got out and still finished all right, so he can't complain too much. There you go. He can't complain too much. <laughs> Double thumbs up from Walker. I think that's sarcasm right there, if, if you tell me. But good hole shot. Uh, way to make that happen. We're going to see a lot more of that in the future? Yeah, I sure hope so. Uh, I've... I've I don't think I've ever started on the inside of, uh, of the start line, and this, this was my first time ever doing it, and there was nobody on my inside, and ended up grabbing the whole shot, and uh, had a pretty good race. My, my buddy Stu Baylor over there, he, uh, he actually picked the starting spot for me, and uh, it worked out, and hopefully I can keep that going, because I could use the extra 250. I'm sure you can, man, and, and, and uh, top it on top of that, I'm sure your sponsors have got to be pretty pumped too, man. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I got a lot of people behind me this year. Uh, GBC is a huge help to me, Custom Axis, uh, Canyon Motorsports, uh, Hauser, Quad Tech, Fast Company, Fly Racing, uh, CD Boots, uh, Twin Air. It goes on and on and on. G2 ergonomics and all, all the above. But uh, thanks to everybody. Thanks to the mud fleas. And uh, they did great. And hopefully we can do it again next time. All righty. Sounds good. Landon Wolf, ladies and gentlemen, taking the whole shot here today in $250 from our good friends at Wiseco Performance Products. One name, one solution. And I believe we can take a break. Is that what you guys want to do on Racer TV? We'll reset the podium. We'll be back with more presentations here from the X Factor GNCC in just a moment. Are you looking for a dirt bike piston that can increase power and decrease blow-by? Then check out Wiseco's all-new Racer Elite Piston Line. Racer Elite has been used exclusively by the pros, including RCA, Joe Shimura, Suzuki Factory Racing, and are now accessible to the public. Available for popular 250 and 450cc dirt bikes, the Racer Elite Series is the first off-the-shelf asymmetrical power sports piston ever made. Its fully machined billet aluminum construction features an exclusive custom lap top ring. Step up with dyno-proven power gains with Wiseco's Racer Elite Piston Line. 
You smell it, you feel it, you right. can taste it in the air. Speed, man. Full wide open. Blast. I don't really like high school too much. Too booky, too take notes, learn this, and that's it. Yeah, wild take that full size motorcycle. The feeling of taking them apart every day, putting them back together. Woo! You can't explain it. Everything I learned applies to now. Seeing your motorcycle that you put together right around the track at 180 miles an hour. Oh, definitely rewarding. My name's Mike. My school's Wyotech. Get on the fast track to a career turn pro at Wyotech. Introducing SoundArt, the world's first truly customizable, concealed, flat panel art speaker system. Sound art is elegantly hidden behind a high-grade, textured canvas wrap, bringing together the best of sound and art. This innovative design allows for a truly invisible, high-fidelity sound experience without bulky speakers. Sound art by Ansia. Your art never sounded so good. And welcome back to GNCC Live. Wow, wow, wow. Mikey Wayne's here with Rodney Tomlin, who is down on the uh, podium. We're going to get those XC2 podiums underway for you here in just a moment. But uh, the word of the day, surreal. Surreal for Johnny G. That was about as good as it gets right there. Uh, Rodney and I doing a little bit of roll reversal today, and I couldn't be happier. I couldn't be happier for Johnny G, Rodney Tomlin, and I mean, I think that's just the general consensus out there is just happy. Boy, not a better guy that could have happened to after 23 years as an XC Pro taking his very first win here today. Uh, again, the XC2 class that's going to be coming up in just a moment. Uh, there you take a look. Here's the top five there today. Johnny G, Johnny Gallagher taking first place. Walker Fowler taking second. Adam McGill, the Gator, taking third place. Chris Borich taking fourth. And Landon Wolf, LW, rounding out the top five at the Amsoil X Factor. Well, Mikey, down here on the podium as we get set for our second podium presentation, this one for the XC2 Pro-Am class. Let's put our hands together for our top three in this class. Hunter Hart in third, Matt Lindell in second, and Greg Covert getting the win here in the XC2 Pro-Am. And by the way, that doesn't look like Matt Lindell because Adam is filling in for him. Matt actually uh, uh, taking a trip with the uh, folks at the EMTs, getting some mud washed out of his eyes. Stepping on over here, I want to hear his big round of applause for this guy right here. Leading the overall after lap number one, Hunter Hart ladies and gentlemen third place position and I saw by the body language that uh, you were exuding uh, when you got off your quad at the end of this race you were a little frustrated uh, to, to know that you had things going so well but at the same time I'm sure you were a little relieved to be able to walk away with third in the class this with this day Oh, absolutely. I mean, I heard that first lap. I don't know who yelled it to me, but I was cruising around. They're like, first overall, first overall. And I was like, no way. And uh, I caught, I caught, uh, I actually rode behind Walker a little bit that first lap. And then we hit the fields and uh, I was behind Chris. And I'm like, I've always wanted to ride with these guys. It's awesome. And I mean, at the same time, I'm like, this sucks. I didn't have any goggles on. They're just roosting the crap out of me. But I mean, it was, it was awesome. I mean, ev everything was going great. And then unfortunately, we got buried, buried, buried uh, for probably four or five minutes on that second lap. And, um, I mean, without uh, Ryan Eccles, my dad, Brian McCormick, and one other dude out there, that we wouldn't be up here because we were, we were so buried in these train ruts. And then uh, Dustin Hendershot, about another mile and a half later, helped me get out, too. We were, we were stuck, stuck. And, I mean, that was just, it was just you were out there, and there was nobody out there for miles. And it was kind of just survival. And, I mean, it was fun. I wish we could have taken that nice trophy home from Johnny, but pumped for Johnny. And uh, well, we know we can do it. We just need a little bit, a little bit of mud and a little bit of better luck. But, hey, we're still up here, and it's awesome. No doubt, man. Congratulations. Spectacular ride, and good job even for third place, it sounds like, in today's conditions. And I'm sure there's a one or two people that you want to say thanks to. Oh, wow, we got Frisbees. Hunter Hart Frisbees we're going to throw it out, huh? We do, yeah. We'll do these at the end. But uh, I definitely want to thank my mom, my dad, God, for keeping me safe. Ithaca Recreation Sports, Conover Collision, Muddy Cotton, Evans Coolant, Sea Concepts, Maxis, Max Tires for getting me through out there, um, Alaska Motorsports, HMF, Scott Goggles, Quad. Tech, uh, Hauser Racing, Fox Racing Shocks, DP Brakes, Carb Sport, Motor X, b &R, and Fox Clothing. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hunter Hart, third place here today in that XE2 Pro-Am as we move over here to Adam Wackel. Wackel, and he is standing in and for uh, Matt Lindell, who is having some issues seeing, I understand, right? Yes, sir. So uh, they're trying to wash his eyes and stuff out right now. Did he uh, have anything he wanted you guys to say to everybody? Yeah, he, uh, I'll give a little race summary from my opinion. He uh, had a, towards the end, towards the back of the pack start, uh, 
kind of worked his way up. It was nice to see him towards the front early on with the bad start. Uh, every time I saw him, he didn't have goggles on, so that's not good. And uh, he still was able to pull off a second. That's pretty impressive. And uh, I'm sure he just held his eyes open until the end of the race. Anybody he want to say thanks to today? Yep. Uh, Shockworks Motorsports, GBC Tires, Moose Racing, Gold Speed, Variant Racing, Spider, Sp Spider Graphics, Precision BNR, HMF, Power Mad, Hauser, Tire Spines, Dirtworks, RGR, IMS, Glenn Innovation, Rockwell Time, 100% Goggles, Sunstar, Uni, Uni Custom Axis, Custom Axis Shocks are working great, Sharia Batteries, Valentine Food Company for the great food at the track, Tri State Chucking. And uh, 22 films on, on YouTube. Go, go check those guys out. All right, he sounds good. Thank you, Adam, for standing in for Matt Lindo. Hoping the best for him, for sure. I know uh, no goggles makes for a long and rough day. And this guy right here knows about long and rough days. And he came out on top of this one. How about it for Greg Covert, your XC2 Pro-Am defending champion. Greg, I tell you, man, these boys brought some real competition in 2017, man. And you're rising to the occasion, it looks like. Yeah, they're definitely, they brought the heat, and I knew they were going to, that's why I wanted to stay back and try to defend against the boys, and uh, they're definitely making it hard on me, but we're staying consistent, and it uh, feels good to w get a win here. Um, it was a tough day. I got stuck a few times. Uh, actually, I was upside down in a creek the first lap, and luckily Cheyenne Chadron was there to help me out with that, and uh, yeah, it was a long day, but just kind of kept on plugging along, trying not to get stuck. Seen Hunter stuck there on the second lap, and uh, Lindell got pretty buried there not too long after that. So just rode a smart few miles to the finish line, and it does feel real good to get a win. Well, I bet, man. Were you, were you concerned about two laps of racing? <laughs> no, not really. I was kind of glad when I heard that, you know, uh, doing three or four laps, I don't even think it would have been possible out there. I've never seen a track that bad before, honestly. I mean, the ruts and the water and the logs we were going over, it was unbelievable. And... For these squads to even be able to make it through that is pretty crazy and definitely have to have a good setup out there and, you know, we did. We got it done. Old school right there, my friends. That's what GNCC racing is all about, man. Good job. Congratulations to you on your win. This is what, win number two this season? No, this is win number one, actually. Really? I thought that you had gotten at least one so far this year. Just coming up a little short, huh? Yep, coming up a little short, but hopefully we can keep the momentum going here in Ohio. We got the win on John Penton last year, so... Looking forward to that, and it's going to be a short week, though. Not very many days off, but looking forward to it, and hopefully we got some good weather for Ohio. I got, I got my cheat sheet here. Um, definitely can't thank my mom and dad, my brother, um, my brother's girlfriend's family, Norm. Her dad came out and uh, got me goggles there on the first lap when I needed it. That was huge. And... Um, um, McGill's family, Claire McGill, we didn't, we forgot our mafia mitts at home and we didn't realize it until about uh, Friday morning. So I messaged her like seven o'clock in the morning and asked them if they had any extras. And she said she had two sets available and that's what we needed. So can't thank them guys enough. Um, we got high gear suspension, gold speed, Waynesburg Yamaha, Moto Experts, Hauser Racing, Fast Flex, FMF, Spider Graphics, Precision, FPS, Fly Racing, IMS, Works Connection, DP Brakes, Tire Balls, Brap Tech, Cycra, XC Quad Racers, Elko, Scott Goggles, and Ori Grip. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, Greg Covert, your winner of the XC2 Pro-Am class. Right there, my friends, his first win of 2017. He is your defending champion of this class right now. And uh, where's it? Oh, where is your trophy? I don't know where. Anyway, we got it going on. Oh, that's right. So Greg Covert's got his trophy. And uh, do you have champagne as well, Greg? You do not have champagne up here. Okay. Well, is that it over there? Sorry about that. I haven't done this in a while, if you remember. About four years, I think. So there you go. To the victor goes the spoils, as they always like to say. And I know that these right here are some sweet, sweet spoils for Greg Covert, the winner of the XC2 at the Amsoil X Factor GNCC. And up next, we got top amateur. Who got the whole shot in that class, by the way? Was that Cameron Bruce got the whole shot? He got the ATB uh, All Balls Racing $100 whole shot award. Hopefully we'll be able to get that into him. I believe I see Jeff Pickens. Is he top amateur? Or Dustin, who is it? Who got top amateur today? Dustin Hendershot. Okay, where's Dustin? Is he here down here? 
All right, come on over, Dustin. We'll get you on here real quick while these guys continue their celebrations. And uh, I know that Vet A 28 plus class was uh, certainly a, uh, a barn burner. We've seen a lot of different changes. Come on up here. I know, well, he's getting his pictures taken. Facebook Live, Facebook Live. All right, there you go. Let's bring it up. And how about it? Haven't seen this guy up here in quite some time on a podium. I haven't personally anyway. How about it for Dustin Hendershot, Vet A 28 plus class winner and overall where'd you end up finishing today in the overall i know you guys were running like ninth place at one point man 11 three seconds off 10th wow man that was some uh that was some stuff out there you were running ninth lap before so you really didn't lose a whole lot of a lot a lot of things there but uh, congratulations to you on on getting these top honors man do you want to talk about today's race tell us how it all went down for us Oh, you know, I got my normal crummy start and uh, just tried to start picking off through the, the pack and uh, not get stuck and, and make smart choices and kept getting stuck. And uh, then I'd get going back again and I'd catch Bowman and, and uh, Jeff Pickens and AJ and, uh, you know, I think I was right up in there and then I'd get stuck again trying to trying to make a pass. So just kept pushing as hard as I could, as hard as I could. And, uh, you know, got around one by one and, uh Started to get a little bit of gap. Still was making uh, mistakes, getting stuck, but there was nothing you could do about it with the ruts the way they were. You just had to attack it as quick as you could once you got stuck and get off of it and get, get it moving again. And that was just kind of what I kept doing uh, all of lap one and about the first half of lap two. And I kind of realized I was starting to get a gap. I didn't see or hear nobody behind me in the class. So um, I should have probably tried to lay it out more, a little bit harder there the second lap. If I'd have realized I was out high up in the overall, I might have. but kind of the last uh, three, four miles here, all the open stuff. I just wanted to finish and not kill the bike because it was starting to sputter a little bit. Um, had a lot of deep, you know, creek crossings and water uh, up over the engine in a few places. So pretty happy to get the bike finished. You know, we had bike issues at South Carolina that kept us off the podium. Um, so happy to get, you know, up here again. Happy to see you up here, man. Anybody you need to send a shout out to for helping make this happen? Yeah, you know, uh, my wife and my little boy couldn't be here today, Nicole and Lane. I want to thank them for all their support in racing. Um, I got to thank my little brother, Aaron, and his girlfriend, Ashley, for coming with me this weekend. Ashley's a goggle girl this weekend. She done awesome, got me goggles both laps coming through. Um, and I got a lot of, got to thank a lot of other people. Um, B&R Motorsports does my engines, uh, engine, you know, pistons, cam, stuff like that. Matt Pierce at Pierce Performance, always helping me pit. Uh, Max's tires was one of the big keys today to, uh, you know, getting out of those ruts, getting going good. Those things hook up when you groove them. They're, uh, they're the Mudmaster tires, you know. So big, big thanks to Casey Greek at Tire Balls and Max's for all their help there. And uh, Qualtech Seeds kept me uh, hooked onto that, that seat pretty good. And um, Spider Graphics were looking great out there and bright so everyone could see those. Uh, my Axis shocks and Hauser front end were great, and my RJR bumper and uh, pegs uh, kept me protected and uh, kept mud from packing up around my uh, foot pegs. You know, they just come out with those pegs for the Yamahas this year. They're a great product. And um, uh, that's about it for today. I want to thank God for keeping me safe, basically, too. Amen on that one. Congratulations to you, Dustin. Good to see you up here. That's Dustin Hendershot, Bet A 28 plus class, 11th overall. And, of course, that's going to ramp up this Saturday day of racing here at the MSOIL X Factor GNCC. We'll be back again tomorrow with more great racing on the two wheels side of things, about 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, or Eastern Daylight Time, I guess it would be at this point. But uh, until then, on behalf of my co-announcer and all of us here at Racer TV, of course, uh, Mikey Nichols and everybody, thanks again for tuning in. I'm Rodney Tomlin. Great day, everybody.